Hello and welcome to the Game Informer Show. I'm Ben Hansen, joined by Andy McNamara. Hello. And Joe Juba. Hello. Oh, thanks for watching and listening, everybody. Uh, we got a big show. We're talking about uh, not Call of Duty Modern Warfare, <laughs> but by the time you're watching and listening to this, the review is probably on the site, gameformer.com. Um, mm. Reiner reviewed that one, which is interesting. Normally a Dan yeah. Pack joint, but he yeah. was a little bit busy. Been busy. Uh, yeah, so check out the review on the site. Uh, plenty of video up there as well. Uh, we're talking about Outer Worlds. Yeah. Joe, we me. went on that cover story. That was back in January. Of this was year. it? Yeah. Oh, man. And there was a lot. I think we're all cautiously optimistic, but I feel like as the months went on, caution started to rise in my mind a little bit. And now it turns out I was wrong. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll dive into that. We'll yeah. talk all it's about it. It's a great it. game. Yes. Uh, Matt Miller's going to join us. He's been playing, uh, well, he hasn't been playing. He went to a press event to play uh, <laughs> Fallen Order, the new Star Wars game. Um, he's played, what, like three hours of it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so the final round of impressions before that game comes out. That should be fun. Uh, Leo, do you want to talk about the Rise of Skywalker trailer, or is that old? Sure. Old great. We'll talk about that, too. Uh, then fun community emails, and then back half of the show, uh, it'll be a fun uh, like trip down memory lane, uh, but which leads us to something we should probably address. <laughs> Andy, what are you doing here? Uh, I'm here. Well, I'm here. I'm here for you, Ben Hansen. Oh, that's very that, sweet. That's what I'm here for. I, I think. I, I think. I, it's not. By the way, it's not for me to say. I think this is. <laughs> I think this is for you to say. Yeah. Uh, we should let everybody know uh, that. With the Pokemon cover story out the door, uh, I'm very, very sad to say this is my final episode of the Game Informer Show. I'm going to be leaving. what? <laughs> yeah, surprise! Yeah, we've known Were that. you guys going to tell me this? <laughs> yeah. We wanted your raw reaction. It's all about no. authenticity. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. So it's uh, my last day at Game Informer as well, um, which is bizarre. And I know it's going to seem sudden and jarring and you know, confusing to, to and listeners. And sad. And sad. You'll have a lot of emotions. Like, and sad. I, I've been dealing with it for weeks, maybe even months, and I still have a lot of emotions mm -hmm. and conflicting thoughts on it. Um, so I understand that it's a bit of a, a shock at a left field and stuff. But, uh, well, can I say... Please. Thank you so much for everything you've done Agreed. for, for this sweet. show and this community and, and uh, you know, everything here in the office. I mean, I know I'm not alone in saying we all just really appreciate what, what you've done for us here. That's very sweet. So. Yeah, it's been, it's been a long road. It's been nine years, which yeah. a Game Informer, I think, is the equivalent of like a week because it's yeah. not to be everybody won't <laughs> we, leave. We got some old folks here. Yeah. Oh, sure. my God. Yeah. It's stunning. I feel like any other employee would be like, nine years, that's crazy. And here it's like, Reiner was like, huh, didn't make a decade, huh? It's like, I <laughs> <laughs> boy, it felt like a lifetime to me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I I, re I remember when when Hanson when Hanson joined. He was he was our spunky video guy. Spunky, <laughs> is that code uh, for awkward? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you didn't lose awkwardness over the years. That's true. So, you know, That's you true. still you managed to keep that. Thank um, you. But no, I think you know, I think the the Game Informer show uh, uh, stepped up under your under Thank your you. reign, and and like I think it uh, it took off and, and changed, and you know, you were a big part of it, and and certainly. Um, you know, we're all, we're all, we're all sad. We like, we like, we like, we like Hanson. He's done a lot of great work on uh, so many cover stories. I mean, there was 80. Yeah. You it's counted? insane. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's um, a lot. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of those were in a row. <laughs> it was like <laughs> yeah. probably 55 in a row or something. Yeah. Wow. And, and did all the video work that we did that went up like uh, for the month that followed. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, you know, it, uh, terrific. <laughs> bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> prolific prolific work yeah it's it's been a journey i i was thinking back to like uh, the interview with you andy back in the day and i'm still stunned that you guys didn't really ask me much about games i remember going into your office for the interview which i was very very nervous about uh and i said like oh i like your big boss statue and I remember Reiner said, well, he knows who that is, so that's cool. <laughs> no follow-up questions <laughs> about, like, what games I play, anything like that. It's like, boy, I could have just known who Big Boss was and gotten hired here, which seems insane. Did you, do you remember, did you wear, like, a suit and tie for your interview or anything? That's a good question. I don't think I did. It was probably just, like, a button-up shirt. Um, and I remember it was, I went in very nervous and then uh, realized very quickly, Oh, this Andy guy likes to talk. <laughs> like, I just have to sit here and listen for my job interview. This isn't so bad whatsoever. I came in with a suit and tie and remember looking, like looking around and being like, "Whoa, I misread the room on this one." <laughs> you were uh, then pelted with spitballs. <laughs> I, I like both. I like both scenarios. Uh -huh. I think. I think. I think it's nice so, either way. So there's no wrong answer That's by right. the way in that. I remember uh, really blowing it to Andy where when I sent in uh, 
my cover letter, like the first email about like, hey, I saw this job opening. I'd like to apply. <laughs> I did the bonehead move of I literally forgot to attach my resume. And so I had to like follow up like, oh, I know I made a mistake. So like out of the gate, I felt like I was blowing it. Also in my opening email, I called you Andy the Game Dandy. Because I thought that'd what? be a cool and <laughs> fun throwback. <laughs> and it's, it's, like, a good I don't thing, it's a good thing you're quitting right now, let's just say. <laughs> oh, I don't know man. how you hired me after like those two colossal errors. Whew. It was like, stunning. Yeah, he, if there's one thing Andy loves, it's digging up that particular piece yeah, of performance history. history. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you for bringing it up now. <laughs> uh, uh, what have I got n- to lose? No, well, I, now I, what's going to happen is as soon as you're gone, we're going to give your former co-host Tim Turry all the credit for uh, what the Game Informer uh, show has become. He was a huge part of that. Thanks, like, Tim, I couldn't have done it without yeah. Tim. Here, Absolutely, yeah. you know, and even like building the studio. Like Jason A. Striker was such a gigantic yep. part of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is the crazy part is just looking around and like, I feel like I was talking to you a little bit about it yesterday, Andy, but just like feeling when so much of your identity is connected to it, where like this studio in particular, it's like, oh, I painted those walls. I put in the sound dampening. I hung those lights. I wired this. It's just like, oh yeah, those were my weekends. Like, <laughs> I know. That's crazy. <laughs> like these cameras, like I'm emotional about, you know, leaving um, and not working with a lot of people anymore. But at the same time, it's like, well, uh, spoiler, I'm still in Minnesota. Uh, I'm sp- I still feel like I'm going to see people plenty. I'm still coming back for Extra Life, yes. which we'll get to in a little bit. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, the part I'm going to miss is like, I'm going to miss the YouTube channel. Like, I grew that from zero. You know, I'm yeah. going to miss these stupid cameras uh, yeah. that, like, I brought on the Skyrim cover story yeah. trip. Like, my hey, first who cover dropped story trip. that one with the broken viewfinder there, I think there, that by the was way. Jason A. Striker. Oh. And then he had lunged at the table with a knife and put that gash <laughs> in there. The very <laughs> first day we had it, by the way. I, I think we <laughs> never had, we never had a clean table, no. ever. No, not at all. But, <laughs> look, he, look, he made up for it with his technical brilliance and all other aspects of putting the studio together and whatnot. Uh, um, hey, so you can cut this out, please, if, if you need to, but uh-huh. can you tell us what what you're doing next? What a great question. Um, <laughs> so I recommend people follow me on Twitter, which is at Yozetti, Y-O-Z-E-T-T-Y. Oh, makes sense. Uh, yes. You won't have to wait long for what I'm doing next. Um, I can tell you what I love doing, Joe. Yes, <laughs> yes. podcasting about games with my friends, uh-huh. uh, game club-like discussions, uh, and creating fun video features uh, for the community. Um, so please follow me on Twitter, and uh, I, I hope people like what I'm doing, but I could... It's too bad you're quitting because you did all that here. <laughs> Genuinely, Andy. <laughs> yeah, it's weird how that works. The other day, Andy, you made a joke about like, Hanson, you want to come in every Wednesday and still make the Game Informer show in front of me? It's like, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird instinct. <laughs> I like it a lot. Uh, it's the highlight of the job, man. Uh, what's the offer still open? <laughs> Well, and uh, yeah, I if, don't think people will be lacking. And yeah. even if you're not interested in what Ben's doing next, I think you should follow him on Twitter and just and just send him send him thanks for and congratulations, uh, all, all, yeah. and congratulations for the work that he's done That's here for and, all these years. Yes, and I definitely want to point out uh, this podcast will continue. Correct, Andy? Yeah, that's that's why I'm here. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, well, first of all, I shouldn't say that's why I'm here. I'm here to, to support that's Ben, very sweet. right? Thank I, which you. I, you know, I think that's one of the things I'd like to say too. Our whole our whole team is excited for Ben, and you know, we we were so lucky to have him here. And like anyone that's come through the Game Informer doors, I always like to mention that we're just lucky to get to work with such smart people for as long as we're able to work with them, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, some stay a long time, like you said, and some mm-hmm. stay for a shorter time, but it's still, it's, it's so amazing. Everyone has such a great influence on our work and, and we, we can't thank you enough. So I do want to reiterate that, but yeah, the show must go on, right? Is the way, it, uh, is the, is the, is the phrase and we're going to go with it. So, um, in the meantime, uh, we're going to, we're going to try to keep this thing together. I, I'm going to take over as host, um, going forward. I, I, Oh, oh God! Please, uh, <laughs> just what he loves. Uh, yeah. Just what I love. This I, egomaniac <laughs> insisted on it. No, I was like pulling teeth. It was like to get teeth. Andy to host a show called the Game Informer Show. It was. I, I, I just, you know, I think, um, you know, maybe it's maybe it's short term, maybe it's long term. I don't know what what it is, but I think that uh, I've filled in for you in the past. Um, it's people I think have mocked my shows that I have done. <laughs> uh, have but. <laughs> I, I think it's the best way forward, uh-huh. uh, yeah, I agree. and we can kind of put it together, and we'll look to see how we're going to change the show, or or what you know, because this is this is definitely Ben's show, and I'm going to try to emulate that, which is going to be very difficult in the short term, um, and then try to work on some new ideas 
um, that we can maybe come in and integrate to kind of make the show maybe a little bit more unique, uh, change it to transform it over time. But I think in the meantime, we're definitely going to keep the same kind of like let's bring in guests that focus on the kind of newest games. Let's have discussions about them. And uh, I think we're, you know, there's no way we're going to get rid of feedback. And, and so it's and still podcastgameformer.com for the email address. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm not taking so, that with me. No, and and, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, and feel free, by the way, to send feedback so we can make yes. sure we send. You know, we'll we'll pass along any notes you want to get to Ben if you don't follow him and, and hit him up on Twitter. Yeah, um, that we pass along to him. Um, but just to, just to reassure everybody that that's that is the plan. It, it is going forward. You know, we we love the Game Informer show. It's an important part of who Game Informer is. Uh, you know, it's definitely, if you look at the kind of tent poles of who we are, this is one of the big ones, you know what I mean? And that, mm-hmm. that's why we're, that's why we're both sad and excited for Ben. Um, but it, it, it will, we will, we'll pull it off. I don't know how we'll good it it'll be, <laughs> but we'll pull it off. Uh-huh. It, it will happen. I want, I want the community to be happy with the show. I'm always in the camp of like, I was annoyed when it shifted from Jon Stewart uh, to Trevor Noah and they kept the same theme music and the show was like trying to be the same, like... I would be happy if you made it your own, Andy, you know, and, and gave it a, a small facelift slash I reboot. think he just called himself John Stewart. <laughs> Hang on. By the way, I... I, I Craig I, Kilborn I, at I, best. I meant yeah, Craig exactly. Kilborn okay. transition. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, I think for for all of those things that, that may change or get, you know, retooled, I think the takeaway is that, like, the things that people come to the show... For the yeah. like the game discussions, they're still talking with the GI staff, still answering your questions and emails, like all of that is still consistent going forward. Yes, yes, yes. that is in some form or another. Yes, that is that is what we're going to do. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Like in your heart of hearts, are you excited to host the show, or how are you feeling about this, Andy? You guys were just mocking me about this beforehand <laughs> because your self esteem bring... is dangerously low. But there must be a part of you that's like, this would be kind of fun. I, it's not that it's not that my self esteem is dangerously low. As I, as I mentioned before, I, I I may like I like to be as a I like to I like to elevate people, make them better, and try to encourage them, and try to make everything they do better. Mm-hmm. And then two is that like I always look at myself as like a journalist. I'm there to like watch and log the greatness, not be involved, right? Not I, I'm, insert I'm, yourself in it. In, correct. Yeah. And and so that, that's 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 just not usually typically my style. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love talking about games, so I mean that part I'm excited about. I, I I'm you know I, I and I love talking to the team. I mean that's the funny thing I. There is a Game Informer show that happens every week, and mm-hmm. that's when I walk up to someone's desk and I'm like, <laughs> okay, what the hell's going on with this mm-hmm. game? I, I interview everyone on staff weekly. Do you that, know what I mean? That like, is true. It, yeah. it is. It is that Just carry a little Zoom recorder around with you, and that's the show, baby. You know, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Talk about um, a reboot, but that's that's. I mean, that's what I do. Is is I, I interview the team to see what's going on, like all the time, right? I, I just it, it's weird to me. You know, I just have a. I'm not. I, I I'm not the like. I'm on Instagram, check out the pictures of me, like yeah. I'm on the podcast. It's just not the kind of who I am. I hope that, I know Joe always gives me crap whenever I accidentally leave in a compliment in the emails <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I do. But, you know, I, I hope that this show wasn't the Ben Hansen show, you know? Like, no. I think, I think, not to pat myself on the back, but I think, you know, I could see people tagging themselves in more tweets and stuff. I tried to keep the emphasis on the games mm-hmm. and, on, and on the guests, and so I don't think it needs to be the hey, check out this hot selfie of me about to host the show every week or whatever the hell you think hosting is. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just, uh-huh. it's, I, it's, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm sure it will be fun. I will have to be bit, get, get better at not talking too much, as you said, as mm. I did in your interview. Mm-hmm. And then I do over chat. Uh, so, you know, I think that's, that's, that's part of it. Yeah. But um, we'll, we'll I, hopefully, I, I, I do think at times I can, I, I can, Every once in a while, be entertaining. So at, at, hey, at, look at, at this. least every He's once changing. in a while, every once in a while, there will be at least I promise mm-hmm. at least one moment of entertainment. Okay. In at least a be sure to send a link because I've been waiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Does anybody want to roast Andy? This is about you, uh, by the way. This is not about. You. I'm here to just like remind people that it's gonna that, that it's not you know that 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 Ben is not the end of the road. Yes. Uh, it is just the end of the road for Ben here, but he's going to go on to do great things. Yes. It is yeah. the beginning of a, a new adventure, uh, and it'd be great to, to get some feedback from folks on it. Um, hey, will you clap yourself out at the end of this episode? Yes, I will. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Extra Life. 
That's yes. still happening November 2nd. Yes. Um, former Game Informer employees are coming back, which was very important to me because <laughs> while lining that up, I knew that I was going to yeah. be one of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I'm glad that worked out. Yes. Um, so still happening November 2nd. We'll be streaming for 25 hours to raise money for Gillette Children's Specialty Healthcare. Um, we have a lot of good stuff to auction off, but Andy, y- you blew my mind where I was like, oh, we have good stuff to auction off. It might be on the lighter end of the spectrum. And then you come in with five or six giant tubs seven seven tubs mm-hmm. of i know old gaming t-shirts that you were thinking about giving to goodwill yeah so yeah. now and, oh my god so people hear gaming t-shirts and that means a lot of things but like i think i think he bought them all at target a couple weeks <laughs> yeah. ago no I, I i think you should clarify the kinds of items we're looking at in these bins uh priceless uh going back to the start of the magazine there is like what looks like never been worn t-shirt for the launch of Final Fantasy VI, for the launch event of the PlayStation 1, um, a Sega Saturn launch bomber jacket. Uh, Was Naughty there Dog for that t- Whistle Stop Tour? There's the Zelda Link's Awakening Whistle Stop Tour, which how many people, w- <laughs> yeah. how many people went on that, Andy? I Probably 20, And maybe? what was it? That was the trip that we took where we, we, we got on a plane in New York and we were going to take it at one point, the plan was to take it, I think, to um, through the middle of the country. I can't remember exactly to get to... You got see, on a train. You got on a train. So yeah. we were going to play on the train every day to play Link's Awakening. Not Spirit Tracks, which is very confusing. There, yeah, and just, this was just like an adventure. And the thing is that this was, in the same time, it had flooded. The Mississippi had flooded, so a bunch of tracks were unusable. So we had to, like, reroute up through Minneapolis. And we lost our sleeper trains, and we ended up being on just, like, just... Like just chairs, and that's what we slept in at night. And then during the day, you played Link's Awakening. Yeah, and train? it had to be during the day because there was no light. There was oh no my light because it was Game Boy. Because it was Game Boy, <laughs> right? <laughs> it it was, it was hard. I mean, it was like it was kind of a it was kind of like a bit like a, of a terror. Yeah, I, I did a tweet about it because I found the pillowcase. There's also a pillowcase I have which I didn't put in the. I guess I could bring in the pillowcase too. We could do a. Hey, you're but, the pillow, but I the pillowcase was was also themed to the Whistle Stop Tour. And I and I, this is a weird thing. This is what happens in my house, like because yeah. we we had to clean out my attic. This is what started me bringing in the t-shirts, by the way. But uh, I like walked in just like a day after work, looked at the um, laundry, and on top was the whistle stop tour pillowcase, and I was like, "Why is that <laughs> there?" Is like, <laughs> you know, like what? How did that? Where did that come from? You know what I mean? And so I described it and like tweeted real quick because I was in the middle of something and wrote the story up and actually it's full of like typos. <laughs> tweeted it out really quick just like I was like, oh, that's funny and then like ran off and did whatever I was trying to do and then came back and people were like, what is this weird thing? And I was like, eh, it's a weird thing. But it's, and, and I also connected me with Russ who was the guy who won who I hadn't talked to in like forever. Because it was a race? Uh, it, what was he, who would, who, basically if, if you finished the game, they were going to donate money to a charity oh, at the end. Apropos. So, and, and like, but we, like, it, like people on the, it was like, we were all, we all bonded on the trip because it was like we were trapped on a train for Sleeping days. upright in seats. Yeah, I mean, for days on end. <laughs> I think halfway through, we got like, they got one like sleeper car for a short time. So we got uh-huh. to like rotate in and take like one shower, like kind of midway through. Right. But I mean, I, I said, I spent a lot of time in the bar car, which was like kind of awful. It was like smoky. People got, I think, could smoke on it. I think you could smoke. And there was like this one little weird window where this lady would like sell us drinks. Turns out she was feeding you bugs the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I, it was weird. <laughs> But I mean, like it was, it was. I mean, it was really fun to like roll into Seattle at the end, and like you know, the train ride through Washington was was gorgeous. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? As far as like just a, a just like kind of traveling. So the but. point is, <laughs> these t-shirts. Good luck finding one of these it's, anywhere. Yeah, and know. there's a lot of history connected to to, to a lot of them. Right? And this is not. 20 t-shirts this is well maybe for the sake of supply and demand i should say there are only 20 t-shirts so there are so many amazing old t-shirts that you will not be able to find anywhere else but not a bunch of like not a lot of duplicates right right exactly so there's a lot of them but it's like a huge (laughs) pile of one of a kind kind of yeah it's absurd and uh we're not auctioning this off but like andy you, you had an old bag there with like a pin that just said zelda and i was like that's like the ocarina logo but it doesn't say ocarina of time and then in the bag was an old notebook of yours, and I flipped through it, and it was your first notes upon seeing Zelda 64 for the first time, probably at like a Space World, you were saying? It's probably a Space World, is my guess. Where he's yeah. writing down, Zelda 64, um, 
Z targeting. It kind of is a letterbox. Like he's tr- describing Z targeting. Like the first time the press was like anyone was really shown. Yeah. The 3D zone. And you'll be happy to know that Andy said, oh, just throw that away. <laughs> <laughs> Yuck. I he did. You. He's you're like, insane. We'll find a good home for that somewhere. My yeah. handwriting is atrocious. Like, no one oh, can that's read right. it. You know what? You're right. I didn't think about that. Let's throw that away. <laughs> good idea. The handwriting is bad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Don't even get me started on the... the I hate I, Civil I, I, War what, letters, what, especially. I mean, those are... It's over. I'm out. I'm not doing this, this show anymore. <laughs> like garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote these things? Uh, is that even English? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... You know, it, that sums up a lot of why I love Game Informer. And I, sometimes I feel like I wanted to stand on a rooftop and just scream, like, this place is so rare in the game industry to have this level of longevity. Uh, it's just so many unique things, so many editors that have been around for so long, uh, not even connecting them, just like that idea of, like, still going on cover story trips and still spending two days with the developers creating these games. Like, it is mm-hmm. unbelievable to share that insight and try and you know we get the door open a crack in the game development to try and bust it open just a few more <laughs> inches for the community each and every month you know like yeah. share this please let's go yeah um, I, mean, I hope we've told great stories right yeah. and we'll continue to tell great stories i mean that's definitely that's definitely our goal yeah yeah um and we are indeed very lucky though we're starting over i mean we will we're going to find a new video guy by the oh, way, yeah. um, which I should point out as well. Or woman. Uh, or, yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm a Minnesotan guy. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's a horrible thing I picked up Everybody's in Minnesota. Everybody's a guy in Minnesota. I would like to go back to my Texas roots where I said y'all, which I felt was a much more like gender neutral. Yeah, take thing. it away. But, uh, but you're correct. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, someone to fill in that spot and, yeah. uh, um, and, 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 you know, move forward, you know, start, yeah. start a new, start a new story. Yes. Absolutely. You're not easily replaceable, but no. we'll replace you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Uh, let's talk about games here. Let's talk about Outer Worlds. Um, oh, that means I get to leave. Yeah. Bye, Andy. Right. Good luck next bye. week. Bye. 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 Come, come back next week. You're going to want to see this. If nothing else, <laughs> if nothing else, it will be a disaster worth watching. So oh, thank God. you, everybody. Thanks, Ben. You are You're amazing. Welcome. Thank right. you for hiring me. You I got owe, it. I owe you my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cheers. Bye. Cheers. Alex Stednick, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having R- me. Remind again. everybody, who are you again? So I am the GI intern, one of the, the GI interns. Yes. I, uh, I bumbled my way through talking about Link's Awakening and Call of Duty last time I was on, so thank you for having me back. I edited out all Bumble, so <laughs> you came across as, uh, who's the smoothest talker in the world, Joe? Oh. Who's the smooth talker? James Bond? I think it's Alex. Oh, Alex. That's right. He's the go-to <laughs> example. <laughs> I wanted to ease everyone in. Oh, I forgot. I think my favorite moment of that was reading through comments after. Oh, no. And someone... and That sounds I, like a mistake. I, right you know, off the bat. I read every I comment, yeah. man. It's great. It's fun. I, uh, but I was scrolling through, and it was the normal stuff. Final Fantasy this and that. And I, like, <laughs> I get to one, and it was like, oh, the intern, se- intern seems all right. And I was like, I ran around the room. I was like, yeah. I've made it. I'm internet famous The now. internet <laughs> approves lightly. Yeah. <laughs> you have not yeah. inspired yeah. outrage. So yeah. that's a win. That's I'm a Minnesotan. That, that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you uh, you edit some videos, right? You did like the Link's Awakening boss comparison. Yes, sir. Is that the only one that's up? I'm trying to think. Uh, I interviewed uh, the one uh, about from Pokemon where um, Mr. Taylor, the director, oh, um, talks about the... for the last the, time. Yeah. It's not James Taylor. It's James <laughs> Turner. He keeps calling the art director for Pokemon I James saw, call, Taylor. I saw, I saw. What? <laughs> <laughs> I had to fix your lower third 14 times. Saw. It's not James <laughs> Taylor. Why do you still have me here? No wonder yeah. you're so excited to edit that interview. Yeah. A James, James Taylor, Taylor Pokemon interview. <laughs> Down on the copper line. Yeah. Yeah. Is that James Taylor? I think so. <laughs> oh, Mexico. Okay. <laughs> Nice. Oh, nice. Um, yes, that was yeah. that was great. Thank you for editing that yes, one. That was you're fun. welcome. Yeah. Um, so Outer Worlds, we should get to. The, yeah, the Alex and I thing. have both. I, I reviewed it. Alex has been playing it also. Definitely. Yeah, I've been yeah. playing it uh, as well. Uh, first couple hours, which. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's just start with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, last night I was talking to Alex about where he's at in the game, where to stop yeah. mm-hmm. uh, for certain discussions wink wink in the future yeah. and, and so it was a confusing thing because he's like oh you stop after this and i'm like i don't know what that word is like i don't really want to spoil anything but I'm like i don't know what you're talking about he's like this entire location where you get this character i'm like yeah. did not happen to me like i know that they've been messaging that so much of like play your choice it's very much going back to the old fallout roots but the fact that they pulled it off to such a crazy extent and the amount of player freedom you have is just awe-inspiring see in this th- that 
I know what si- situation you're talking about. And yeah. To me, it's amazing that you that. Like, you really have to try to not follow that sequence (laughs) in the game. (laughs) Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, Like, you really have to deliberately sort of... But to be fair, they pitch it as, here's an optional thing. And I said, this is fine. I'm going to stick with my main quest. And then drastic differences. It's yeah. funny though cuz I just got to the part where uh, without spoiling anything, I got to <laughs> that fun. that piece of it. Boring. And, and they even go like, "You sure you don't want to go back to this place?" No, like it's over here <laughs> for the last you time. Will die, but you could go for it. Yeah. 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 So yeah, did you... I stutter? <laughs> 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 okay, so what we've got is The Outer Worlds, which is yeah. a game that we've talked about pretty extensively uh, here before. But yeah. um, I, I always, I tend to shy away, especially in reviews, I tend to shy away from making a lot of comparisons because mm-hmm. like, I, I prefer... That's to, a review tip number six. <laughs> <laughs> I, prefer, like, I prefer to judge a game for what it is on its own merits. Yeah. You know, and I think it starts to get, like reviews start to get a little less useful if they're all just sort of buttressed by analogies to other games, because if you haven't played all those other games, then it doesn't always mean something. Yeah. You know, however, I think one, one comparison that paints a very clear picture of the outer worlds. If you're not sure what to expect from it is that like picture fallout here on one side and mass effect here on the other side. Mm -hmm. And then it try to imagine the game that's right in the middle of those two. Right. And that's the outer world, which I feel like that was our best case scenario from the cover story trip. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, it is exactly that. like just the small things because I'm not a follow guy mm-hmm. really at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am a big Mass Effect guy and I'm so happy that it's fulfilling on a Mass Effect level. Honestly, just like leaving the ship, going on a mission, it's like select which companions you're bringing with you. It's like yep. that screen alone, it's like made me want to effing cry. Like, <laughs> oh, thank God. Yeah. And you walk around your ship and your companions are talking yes. to each other. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, so some of the things that make it very Mass Effect are like the space setting. Mm-hmm. The, Subtle. <laughs> the, uh, like the companions, companions have essentially like personal quests, loyalty missions that, yeah. that you do with them. Um, Not romanceable, however. Yeah, that's true. Womp, but, womp. but then also, especially if you're thinking in, in terms of the way the the worlds are structured, something more like Mass Effect 1 or 2, which is, they aren't these, unlike something like Fallout, which is a huge sprawling open world that you're sort of traversing, the Outer Worlds uses pretty compact maps. So, yeah. so I mean, some of the areas are large and I mean, there are plenty of room to explore, but they don't feel bloated. They're sort of contained areas that you... Go and you do your quests. And Digestible. Then, yeah, that's a good, I think that's a good yeah. way to put it. And so in that ways, it sort of reminds me of Mass Effect, whereas like it, it has fallout elements in the sort of like, you know, destroyed wasteland that you're exploring. Combat has like a sort of vatsy feel to it. It's or just, it can. it's just, yeah, so many of the roots are just so old school, CRPG-esque, like d d It's just like that, that tinkering quality to yeah. fallout is all there. Yeah. And if you haven't heard us talking about it before, I mean, the, the co-directors on this game are Tim Kane and Leonard Boyarsky, who yeah. are like fought, like original Fallout veterans. Yeah, mm-hmm. probably should have hit that harder in the po- in the interview last week. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, Obsidian as a studio was responsible for Fallout New Vegas, which is you know yeah. one of the most celebrated games so in that series. So yeah, like they, it, it's got it's got the lineage, and I think the excellent thing about the Outer Worlds is the way that it really sort of like lives up to all that potential. I think. Yeah, I guess we haven't sure. mentioned it. What's your review score? I gave it a 925. 925. That's yeah. it's just amazing. Um, oh, Microsoft must be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine they're doing a victory dance? They're like, oh, good score. Because yeah. honestly, like buying Obsidian, if this game came out and it's a six, mm-hmm. I feel like that's a huge difference in value for your money for Definitely. Obsidian. They own yeah. Obsidian, but I wonder who owns the IP. Uh, I also wonder, except for the fact that we had Matt Booty head of uh, Xbox Game Studios on this podcast and he just said that, yeah, Outer Worlds 2 will be a Microsoft exclusive. Oh, really? Like that, that Straight up. own the IP. Yeah, I was surprised by that. Yeah, absolutely. Huh. Yeah. I wonder if, I wonder if they I have mean, maybe to like, some buy weird... out some sort of publishing rights from maybe. private division or something like that. Yeah. But, because I think, I mean, whatever, a, a game, like scoring the way it did, it, I mean, we're not the only high score on this game. Lots of, yeah. lots yeah. of folks like it. So. And it's just, yeah, it's so... Even though I'm not the biggest Fallout fan myself, like that community is so hungry 
at this point for another game, especially yeah. like New Vegas. Like seeing those New Vegas fans in particular like come out in force, like please let this satisfy. Yeah. And just knowing that like, yes, subset of gaming, <laughs> you yeah. will be pleased by this. Though I will, so I have a friend whose like favorite game of all time is Fallout New Vegas. Wow. And he's like, he was like, should I get The Outer Worlds? I'm worried that it's not going to be as good as New Vegas. And like, let, let me tell you, if you think Fallout <laughs> New Vegas is the best game ever made, like set your expectations a little lower for The Outer Worlds <laughs> just because yeah. like, if you're at that level, nothing is going to topple that, that experience right, for you. Right, for sure. But yeah. The Outer Worlds definitely has like recognizable threads from the way that like you're interacting with different factions, the way the dialogue options work, the yeah. sort of like crunchy RPG stat allocation and things like that. It's all like, it, it, it's got the depth there too. For yeah. sure. One so. of the things that you haven't talked about that I think is the biggest success so far of this game is the writing. This yeah. world is genuinely funny and engaging on a way that something like Fallout 4 for me personally wasn't. Right. Um, the character, the characters are like Mass Effect 2 characters are ones that I want to be in my squad, I want to interact with. Mm -hmm. Even some of the ones that I don't necessarily like love or agree with, they're, they're interesting enough to me to keep pushing that. And this world really does feel lived in and, and natural. I feel like oh, good. there's been a couple of times where I've been going through and I catch, some, I catch a whole quest line because I asked one more question. Whereas yeah, if right, I wouldn't yeah, have, right. it wouldn't have existed. Yep, that's true. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, that's the thing too, is going on the cover story trip. You know, it's like, oh, uh, Tim and Leonard, they're quirky, funny guys, right? And so uh, we had a lot of discussions about the tone and the level of comedy in this game and this universe. And I was a little bit worried. That, like, oh, I wonder if these jokes are going to be Borderlands-esque, just obnoxious in your face. Mm -hmm. But honestly, at least the first several hours of the game, first kind of like big chunk, uh, it's like, oh, it's it's much more subtle than I was expecting on that yeah. on that jokey front, which mm -hmm. is so great. I, I I was very happy to see that also because yeah. like really what it, we say jokey, but it's more of sense of humor than actual joke. Yeah. Like Borderlands yeah. cracks jokes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Outer Worlds doesn't go, I mean, it has moments that made me laugh, but it doesn't go for laughs. It goes for more of a consistent smirk throughout and like world building comedy like the big thing we talked about a thousand times is like you know corporations are all important here yeah uh unemployment is is the worst thing in the world like you're worse than a cannibal right <laughs> yeah yeah which is fun for me um <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's just it's nice that like it's just yeah, yeah thank you yeah. it's just like those beats again and again without going for like the big punchline yeah. setup type thing here. But yeah. or Inherent flip those yeah inherently that's why I found myself laughing out loud because it's not in your face like even yeah. in the character creation they do some some things where they poke fun and I think it's great and I Obsidian has made now two of my the games that I've laughed at the most was Dungeon South Park. Siege 3 yeah oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that's my second truth. Second truth. So yeah. I love. I I came in with high hopes about their writing ability, and I mm -hmm. think they've nailed it thus far. I'm only level twelve, but okay. Yeah. Uh, one thing I'll say to what Alex was talking about is like one of my few complaints about the game is that as much as I do like the the crew on your ship and those characters, like the conversations you have with them are very interesting and satisfying. It seems that they're a little too sparse for me. Hmm. Compared to something like Mass Effect, that when you're walking around the Normandy, it feels like there are more conversations. If you're just like, "Hey, Garrus, what's up? Hey, Liara, what's going on?" It seems like you. It just doesn't like refresh as often seems, as you want. It seems like you learn more about the characters. There are more unique conversations that you can have, and it, that's there are some sort of there are some moments with like scripted moments where crew members are interacting with each other. But for the most part, when you talk, when you go to talk to party members. 95% of the time, it's just the, hey, what's up? And your options are like, hey, I think you should leave the party yeah. or never mind, I'll talk to you later. Right. As a you know, you know a listener and community member, Brandon pointed out, uh, it's a mantra for Obsidian, it seems like, in all interviews about this game to say, time and budget, time and budget. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. At like tight constraints on this sucker. Uh, where do you see that around the edges? Like what are the... I mean, I mean, the I, limits to the outer world. <laughs> I, I think I think that's one of the big ones. It's just the the uh, how integral your party members feel for mm -hmm. as, for as much time as you spend with them, and yeah, I mean you, you're using them in combat all the time, or I was anyway. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. uh, how little their stories actually like f 
is actually folded into the main quest that you're doing yeah. felt a little conspicuous to me. But also the game doesn't make you recruit the party members. So I, I mean, I guess I get it on that front. Right. The other thing for me was the way the big choices work. So we can talk about this in a little bit too, but I think the game is really successful at little choices. Things like... How do you want to get into that building? Well, you can hack or you can use science to talk a scientist into letting you through, or you can just fight your way through, or you can sneak around the top and then find a little vent and crawl through it. Like there are lots. It's not just sneak or fight. Yeah. yeah. Like you see in mm-hmm. so many games. Right. right. Yeah. So I think on that smaller level, it's, it succeeds. On the larger choices, things like which faction do you want to control this planet? Mm-hmm. I think those are the moments that feel that fall a little flat for me Hmm. because they all basically end up boiling down to, are you going to side with the evil companies? Are you going to side with the good guys? Or if you've been thorough and done all of your side quests, are you going to find some unlikely way to bring them together? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's always, it feels like there's always that optimal option. If you've been thorough. Yeah. Or, you have to choose between these. But you say that, that, you know, it's not exactly a good and evil choice. I feel, feel like at least in the opening section, like they throw some good shades of gray in there. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like you have a couple wait a minute moments. Yeah, you think about it like that, except I, for me anyway, they do, they go to such lengths to paint the companies and the board that controls them as just diabolical. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're saying it's a mistake to, to side with them? To the <laughs> point, yes. Yeah, I mean... The game, you just feel like a bad guy if uh-huh. you're if, if you're do, working with the board. Hmm. For sure. To that point, though, I felt even on the first world, and this could change much later, um, much later on, like the choice I was going to make wasn't the one I was comfortable with, but it led to what I wanted. Yeah. So I think it does a good job in that. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Um, it seemed like. For a long time, the number one question about this game was how big is it? And Obsidian has been messaging, it's not New Vegas, it's smaller than New Vegas, it's mm-hmm. not open world. Do you now have an answer for what people should expect? <laughs> I do. So I, <laughs> I I played the game twice. Uh, one playthrough was very thorough. Like I cleaned out my quest log. I did every quest I found. Yeah. That took me, the, the game doesn't have a timer on it, so I don't know exactly how oh. long it is, but it's it was somewhere in the about 40 hours. It's 30 to 40 range. Okay. Then I did a second playthrough that was, I was very cavalier about the choices I was making <laughs> and was really focused on just getting through it quickly to see some different outcomes. Like shooting left and right, shooting quest givers to that level yeah. of just... Yeah, so like, look, for instance, let's say that there's... Yeah, we should mention you can kill anybody in this game. Yeah, basically it's everyone amazing. everyone can die. I mean, important people can die. Yeah. So in one case, let's say there's someone who's like, okay, for me to help you, you need to talk to this faction and get them on your side and then talk to this faction and get them on your side, which in turn, getting those people on your side involves doing a short quest chain for them. You know? mm-hmm. Except on my, se- which I did on my first playthrough. And then on my second playthrough, I just killed the head of this faction. When I first met them, the head of this faction, when I first met them. And then when I went to go talk to that first guy for the first time, he's just like, well, I was going to ask you to do some stuff for me, but you already killed these folks. So let's just go on. And it's just <laughs> like the so next step of the quest. Right? That's so insane. So yeah. Okay. Um, so that was my second playthrough, and that took me about s- between six and seven hours. But that's like oh, wow. basically going for a speed run. I mean, not speed run, but that is that is a very sloppy, you know what you're yeah. doing, and you don't care about the consequences. In some ways, I mean, it's weird to keep harping on it, but it feels so Mass Effect 1 mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Or, I mean, or KOTOR, KOTOR, KOTOR 2 kind yeah. of, of that scope where, I mean, structurally, it's a lot like that too, where you go to a world... You talk to everyone you can find. They give you a bunch of quests, and mm-hmm. you go out in the world, and you sort of knock them off the checklist one by one. You go back to town. You get your rewards. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, you make some big decision. And then you might come back to the to planets later for very, like smaller tasks and side quests. Yeah. But for the most part, you're kind of done with that area, and you move on to the next one. Yeah. So uh, I've been playing on a base PS4, and I PS4 Pro. And even before on this podcast, I've been like, there might be one to keep your eye on. I don't know what this is going to run like. Mm-hmm. I've been... Pleasantly surprised. There's, yeah, there's a little jank in the trank, as Joe Juba once said. <laughs> jank uh, the, in, the in the trank. In the rapid fire. Yeah. And like, there's stuff where 
the textures of like clouds yep. will look a little sky, rough. Yeah. Stuff like that. But honest, it's weird to say maybe my, <laughs> maybe my expectations were a little bit too low, but I was like, this is a lot more solid than I was expecting. Yeah. Especially Obsidian, I think, has a has, some of the stuff they put out has not been the most polished. What? Uh <laughs> And this is the most polished Obsidian game I've ever played. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's Hands amazing. Down. Hands down. That sense. I mean, I still had some weird bugs and technical issues throughout, yeah. but like it wasn't, it wasn't to the point that I felt like I was, I wasn't scared. But <laughs> as I've been in some games, <laughs> the Obsidian fear. They call well, it. <laughs> there's that thing where it's like, am I going to hit a bugged quest that just yeah. isn't going to let me progress through <laughs> right, something? And it's like right. th- that. That was not a fear for me as I was playing. Yeah, this. yeah. What were you playing um, on? Or what I was playing on PS4 Pro. Oh, okay. Uh, I know that uh, one of the big questions I've seen is people asking, like, what should I play it on? PC. I would right, think Master Race. a lot of I mean, people, yeah. a lot of people are, I mean, I think that question comes from people wanting it on Switch, but not knowing if it's safe to play oh, it on of Switch. Because right. the Switch is, it's coming out down the road. Down right? the road. Okay. And I would say, I... Maybe I've been soured by some ports that have not had great performance on Switch. Saints Row 3. Saints Row 3, <laughs> which I was so excited for, and it just d- barely works. <laughs> um, so for something like that, I would say for two reasons, like just technical stability. I haven't played the Switch version, but like mm-hmm. I know the PS4 Pro one works. Yeah. And you can play it now rather than later. Yeah. Like, sure. This is a really good game. Also, it's it's a good game for replayability if you're Mr. or Mrs. Moneybags out there, right? Yeah. And you want to like buy it on Switch? That would be cool to have a portable version of yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And there's no uh, uh, there's no New Game Plus or anything, so it's not yeah. like playing it on another system is going to... You're not going to lose any progress if you start a new. Right, right, right. right. So. Uh, am I doing something wrong? I feel like I keep getting guns with the exact same damage, where it's like duplicate upon duplicate upon duplicate. Is that odd? That's not odd. What you should generally be doing is if there's a gun that you like, like let's say there's a there's a handgun. Yeah. And the base version of it does 100 damage. Yes, which all of them do from what I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> the base ones. Uh go to your workbench and modify it. Put some put a magazine on there that does shock damage mm-hmm. and then something else that like extends the range of it. And or... are you buying those parts? Cause I keep going to the workbench and I can't, you see find anything. them in the environments. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You, you, and I mean, yeah, you can buy them or find them. Sure. Uh, check out vending machines and stuff. And then, and then you can also tinker, which is just a way to sort of passively increase the level of the weapon. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then as the game goes on, you'll find handgun Mark two that just okay. has better, uh, just has better base stats. And then you build that one up a little bit. Yeah. So it's kind of about finding a style of weapon that you like and then investing in it to, to modify yeah. it. Yeah. But going off Ben's question, because I was, I was feeling that too, and I'm starting to just find the Mark II stuff. Mm-hmm. So have you found it, is it okay to just buff out your Mark I stuff and then the game will supply the rest of the mods like the rest of the way? Does that make sense? Like I'm not going to, if I use this mod X, it's not going to be not available for me. That like the game's going to keep giving me new mods. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I think you. I think you get a pretty steady stream of mm-hmm. of, of them, and okay. you, know, you get duplicates and stuff that yeah. you can that you can reallocate for sure. I've been shocked in the opening section, and again, I was flying to my detriment uh, too much through this. Is uh, ammo? Like I kept running out of ammo, and it's like, what the mm. hell? That was a little bit of a concern for me on my second playthrough. Yeah. So here's here's the deal. Is my first. This actually gets to one of the things I love about this game also is my first playthrough, I barely shot anything Mm -hmm. because I had my build was focused. And this is something I know uh, former GI news editor Imran on Twitter was like, tell us what your build is. Hmm. So my first build was a character that was focused on one handed melee weapons. And then I dumped a ton of points into the inspiration stat, Hmm. which is good for increasing the damage that your party members do. And then I spent perks to do things like make their special, make my companion special abilities uh, cool down faster and do more, do more damage and have a higher critical rate. So it got to the point where a fight with a bunch of marauders would start and maybe I'd start it by like, okay, I'm going to go and like sneak attack this guy. 
and I'd take him down and then my two party members would just mow down everyone. It's like, by the time I could even get to a marauder to melee yeah. attack them, you know, my Sam cleaning unit had already like acid sprayed them to death. Oh, that's amazing. So I really enjoyed that. I guess it's a little more of an automated sense to combat where mm -hmm. I kick it off with a sneak attack and then my party members just sort of plow through everything else. So I didn't do a lot of shooting then. And then on my second playthrough, I focused a lot more on I'm using assault rifles and handguns and I'm mm. scrounging for ammo and I'm using the... Uh, the time slowdown, the thing that's like VATS, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. time dilation. I think it's actually the official name is the thing that's like VATS. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's, it's, an easy, it's yeah. such an easy oh, way course, to convey it, right? It's the yeah. thing where time stops and you can shoot at someone's head or their legs to blind them or cripple them yeah. and, you know, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Reviews on the site, huh? Yes, you can go and read it. I wrote it. <laughs> good job, Obsidian. Yeah. Very good job. And, and also, it's one of those things, too, where it's rare to shout out a publisher, but, like, this game might not, probably would not exist if it wasn't for private division, that yeah. weird indie label taking a risk, right? And yeah. it's, it's amazing they pulled it off. Yeah, and I think, yeah, they, it also benefits so much, I think, from the a time and place of, the, of a community that feels maybe a little yeah. bit slighted by Fallout uh -huh. and is really hungry for, I mean, and Mass Effect Andromeda is really hungry oh, for yeah. this kind of adventure yeah. that just, there's just a vacuum in this game isn't good just because it's there, but it's yeah. good because it's good, it's but it good. also fills that spot. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And I know the game, most people haven't even played it by the time they're listening to this, and we talked about how Microsoft invo is involved now, and I know a lot of people cringe when they saw that. The budget that they're going to put behind that, yeah. I am so excited for. For I sure. Think, I think there's potential for a Mass Effect 1 to 2. I think so. I, yeah. I agree completely. And yeah. yeah, it was interesting talking to Leonard Boyarski last week about that and there's so much positive feedback when they were talking about how they're like we, we don't think going open world is right for this franchise like it's multiple planets we don't want to bite off too much and like every yeah. comment's like f yes <laughs> yeah. forget open yeah. world and it's like that must be music to microsoft's yeah. uh thrifty ears yeah i yeah. really hope that they stick to that for a sequel and I, I think we've talked about this in the show before too but it's rare that i go on a trip for a cover story and the team is so open and frank about like, oh yeah, we want to do a sequel. We have That's ideas right. for a sequel. We a sequel is That's cool. If they'll let us make it, we are gonna do a sequel. Yeah. Even and, I remember to the point that like we think it'd be fun to call it two or Outer Worlds two T W O because then it it'd be a uh, acronym. Or, uh, what am I talking about? The Re world's outer an or anagram. Yeah. Of palindrome. Yeah. Thank you. No, it's not a palindrome. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> idiom, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so as I was playing this, just knowing that that's the mindset of the team, yeah, it mm -hmm. gets me very excited for like the future too. Because yeah, Phil this, Spencer's just diving into his money pool like Scrooge McDuck. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the game's called The Outer Worlds <laughs> uh, on Xbox uh, Game Pass. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. also on PS4 and PC and Switch later. And Switch later. Speaking of switch later, let's switch now and get you two jokers <laughs> out of here. Oh. Okay, bye. One, two, three. Hey! Oh my God! Uh, Leo Vader. Hey. Ben Reeves. Hey. Matt Miller. Hey. Oh my God! He's turned to the dark side. Turned to look at my side. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> deep no, breath? it's crumbling. Yeah, you know, Jenga uh, Tower's falling. Uh, it's no good. Uh, Matt sorry. Miller, you got to play Jedi Fallen Order. Holy cow! Did I? Uh, three hours, I hear. Something like that. Wow! <laughs> Almost time to call your doctor. Uh, was it a good time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was super fun. Honestly? Yeah, it was good. Uh, it was stronger than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I played a very, very brief amount of the game at E3. Maybe played it together. It was, it, like, yeah. Mainly it was like, uh, here's a combat arena yeah. and then a little bit That's of that demo. That's mostly area. what yeah. it was. And it was, uh, it, was, it, was, oh, it was good, I guess, at E3, mm -hmm. but I felt like I didn't really have a great sense for the gameplay yet. And this gave me a good sense of the gameplay. Um... It, it's a game, as I articulated in the, in the uh, preview I posted about it, uh, that is that draws on a lot of inspirations. It's it's uh, at times it feels like Uncharted, uh, at times it feels like God of War, and at times it feels like Dark Souls. They've been open about that, too, yeah, which is I cool. Think, I was surprised when we did the month of coverage that they had no problem with us running a story that's called like 
how it was inspired by Metroid. You know, putting those names in the titles, it's like they're kind of wearing that on their mm -hmm. sleeve. Yeah. yeah. But this time you actually got a sense for how that works in this game. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I played through the bulk of like the main story content of one of the planets, right? So you're, you're kind of flying around the galaxy. You get a choice of where you go next. And so I could have gone someplace else, but I went down to this planet that had the next bit of the story. And it was kind of, uh, although I guess I don't know exactly, it felt like it was maybe like a... Uh, a little ways into the game, not mm -hmm. right in the middle, but um, uh, and and it was uh, uh, it felt very Star Wars, which is I, I think the best thing that can be said about it. It's a single player single player game. It there's none of that as has been much talked about. None of that like microtransaction bull is in there. Mm -hmm. So mm. you can just kind of embrace like hey, I'm getting my I'm getting new costumes and I'm getting new powers and it's just a sort of natural old school single player Star Wars game. You don't sound crazy enthusiastic about it though. Yeah, why aren't you shrieking? Yeah, I see a lot of why react videos and YouTube? knocking the mic over. You're on uh -huh. fire. Come on. I, I, I thought it was great. I mean, okay. I, I think that... Okay. Um, All right. Uh, I, I think <laughs> that... Larry David over there? Uh, I, I think the worst thing that could be said for it is what I already said, which is that, like, I don't know that there's anybody who's going to go into this and be like, whoa, I've never seen anything like this before. What right. is this laser sword I've got right here? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm blocking blaster bolts? Oh my god! Like that guy's weird shaped and colored weird. Also, <laughs> right? Like they, all the stuff in there is is pretty much I think what you would expect from a Star Wars single player game, but done well. The combat feels good. It's very. I'll tell you another thing I really like about Please. it. It's kind of defense oriented um, in the combat, which is kind of in keeping with the uh, you know the whole Jedi theme, right? They like, love to parry. They do and dodge and and uh, and the Jedi are all about like defense, not attack, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And Karate. they've worked that into the. Um, into the actual mechanics. If you go into this game with your lightsaber just kind of hacking forward into a battle, I mean, you can get through it, I guess, especially on the lower difficulties, but it just doesn't It doesn't feel really good. So it's more Sekiro than Bloodborne? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Um, I, I think I... I think the Dark Souls elements of the combat come... Or, or, sorry, the Dark Souls element of the game comes out more in the... Um, the structure of levels, right? Yeah, so they compared it to Metroid Prime, but it felt kind of Dark Souls to you? Yeah, you're, you're sort of wandering uh, along these paths that are roughly linear. Uh, I mean, you have little open spaces to explore, but you're, you're going along pretty much linear paths, and you get to these meditation spots that are exactly bonfires. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what they are. You stop, you get access to your skill tree if you've gotten any skill points from the XP you've earned. You improve. And if you rest and get all your, um, both your health and your um, healing uses back, then all the enemies respawn. Uh, if you die while you are f out fighting, then you have to go retrieve your XP from the dude who killed you by taking him out. So that element of it is very Dark Souls-esque. But on the normal difficulty, just before I scare off other people like myself who maybe don't love the... Uh, the pace of a Dark Souls game all the time that feels yeah. a little bit too restrictive. It is not that. I mean, it, it feels much more like a traditional action game, especially on the normal difficulty. It's only... I did bump it up uh, at one point to try uh, a harder difficulty, and it, it can get really hard if you do it that way. The, the windows for parries get tighter. Makes. Um, you take a lot more uh, damage when you get hit. Mm -hmm. but, uh, um, but if you, you play it the way it's sort of intended to be played on the normal difficulty, it's 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 very doable. Yeah. Um, and and it's a fun time. Number one concern for me about this game, okay. you know, I trust Respawn by yeah. and large. Sure. Uh, I mean, I like Star Wars. I'm excited for this. Uh, that Dweebus main character. Should oh, I be really? worried? You Norman like Dweebus? <laughs> What's that? Norman Dweebus? <laughs> I, That's every the... trailer I see, I just, I just think he looks like such a dweeb. I have no interest in him. How is he in the game? What show is he from? I think he's fine. Gotham. Gotham. He's like Batman in Gotham? No, I think he's... I don't know who he is in Gotham. Young I haven't watched that show I think he's somebody that people thought was going to become the Joker. I don't know. I didn't but then his twin that. brother did. Something so like that was that. probably oh, played by him as well. That's funny. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we got the real Joker I, from Gotham. I don't know yep. what to tell you. I mean, like, he's a, he is visually based on a real guy, and so they... And no offense to this actor. He's, he's paid enough. He looks like a Dweebus. <laughs> okay, fair also, enough. Also, I do want to say spoilers for Gotham. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's he's fine. I mean, like, I, I one of the things that I appreciate about the character and what I saw of him um, is that I, I think we've seen a lot in the last, like, I'd say 10 years increasingly with each passing year. There's more and more of the, like, the gritty anti-hero, yeah, right? Sure. 
this is not that character. I mean, he's just a heroic Jedi character. He's a guy who's sort of laboring in obscurity and trying to remain hidden, and he gets pulled into this big adventure. Yeah. And there's definitely times during the story where, uh, from what I played, that he's, you know, like his his buddies are like, we just got to get out of here. We got to stay safe. And he's like, mm. but those poor people, we need to go save them. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's... Uh, in some ways, I actually almost find that refreshing at this yeah. point, if only because so many other things are just these kind of like, I'm a dark hero with a dark past, and I do dark things in the dark of night. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, you're why like, can't a dweeb be a main hero for once, <laughs> Hanson? I'm yeah, all for representation. Right. Uh, how's the writing? Good. It's yeah. Star Wars-y. Yeah, did, mm, I mean, you're mean? a Star Wars nut. Uh, you understand this world. Did you have a moment of like, oh, that's interesting, or that's a new perspective on Star Wars or anything like that? Not really. Okay. Uh, when you say Star Wars, you just mean it's like kind of tropey or what? Yeah, there's a bit of a little trope. It's trope-driven. It's it's high concept. Um, Is there romance? Uh, not that I saw. Are mm. there wars? There could be. Mm. Um, there's, there's both stars and wars present. Um, I heard you know, one of the stars from Gotham is in this movie. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I I think one of the things that maybe surprised me a little bit is uh, I was expecting a greater frequency and focus on combat. Yeah. And in the areas I played, I which didn't... were what? Like was it Kashyyyk again? Uh, no, I went down. I was on a planet <laughs> called Zepho, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, hmm. That this point in the story. Uh, the main character has learned that there's this this race of ancient Force users, not Jedi, who mm. um, uh, are of interest to the Empire, and and uh, you go down there and find that the Empire is already there on their old uh, planet, and they've got this big underground temple you have to go explore, and there's some secrets. Is about it like the, the same as like the people that used to be on? Planet Jedha from Rogue One? No, I think this is a largely constructed new species and planet for hmm. the game, to my understanding anyway. Um, and so they're long gone, but their their ancient guardians are still present in the temple. And um, okay, uh, but anyway, like as you're exploring this planet, which is is cool. It's you know the, all these kind of old structures, and then when you go down into the cave system below, you eventually get to this ancient. Uh, a uh, temple that's got all kinds of crazy mechanisms that you need to use the force to manipulate. There's a lot more sort of puzzle solving and traversal stuff than I was maybe expecting. Mm-hmm. Uh, as in, there'll be extended stretches where you're not in combat, where you're just kind of, I'm just kind of moving along here and I'm going to force slow this blade so that I can jump on it and use it as a platform and jump across. And I'm going to use my lightsaber as a flashlight to go into this dark cave and find a um a collectible there and and there's lots of moments that are 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 sort of quieter um exploration and discovery moments than i was expecting and then when you get into a fight it's like it's a big fight for uh for for kind of a quick punctuation yeah um and and potentially a deadly one if you do it badly because there are more interesting things about the star wars universe than just Button mashing clone troopers or whatever. It is not a button mashy game. I mean, there is a bit. The skill system is very focused on combat and improving your your skills and your force use in combat and that kind of thing. But, um, but there's a lot of the time that you're just sort of exploring and there's a big there's a big focus on story. You're on the intercom a lot, or you're talking to your your droid buddy on your shoulder who's always with you. Um, He's pretty cute. He is cute. He's B- fun. BD1? BD1. He's like, a, he's the right kind of companion character. You know what I mean? Like Silent. You know, like, well, mostly, but also not in the way. You yeah. know, like, like uh, I think we've mostly gotten away from that in recent years, but like, you remember games as like bad companion characters where they're like, oh, you're always dying. You're really bumming me <laughs> out always here. always lining up right in front of my cross. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and BD1 is right. like, he's there, he like throws your heels when you need yeah. him and he... Yeah. He, there's a nice little function on the. I appreciate this in the the puzzle sections where you can like totally go it solo and just figure it out. But if you not you're not really feeling that, or you just want to get back into the action and the exploration, there you can just tap a button to get a hint from BD One, and he kind of helps you out. What is, these are like subtitles? Uh, he like squawks his little droid speak and then you're like oh you're right I should go see if there's another ball that I can roll over I here I should look up a YouTube walkthrough <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay totally so, dude so feeling good about it I, I walked away feeling uh, like it was better than I um, had expected it to be really um, I, I'm not I, because I only played one planet it's clear that it's a, it's a pretty robust game with a lot of stuff to do and you're meant to kind of go back to some of these planets once you get new force powers and things I think the real uh, test is going to be 
uh, how it plays in the long term across the full scope of the game. But within a two, three hour stretch, I had a lot of fun. Oh, that's awesome. Um, what'd you think of the Rise of Skywalker trailer? Well, that's pretty cool, right? <laughs> Yeah, it yeah. is. That, I, I like that's 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 you know as as a dork that that's about as good as life gets, right? I thought it was better <laughs> than I read some articles like prepping for it, being like, "Hey, don't be too excited." Or oh, really? This is not the trailer for you because it's on Monday night during the football game, so it's like what? supposed to reach a mass audience. But so like, like, like compare that audience like versus online, trailer. like yeah. you know, Ex- exactly. They were just saying like this one's going to be the high action. Like, why did you say silly. that? Why did I write this article? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a weird thing to say, Ben. So I was like, this is, uh, okay, maybe I didn't have good expectations going in. I thought it would be a dumb trailer for some reason. But then I was like, this trailer is awesome. I, I thought, uh, like, I, I was a person who had mixed feelings about Last Jedi, if anybody wants to go back through That's the podcast. That's right. You can check out our Spoiled about uh, that. Way back when. Yeah. Um, but one of the things I really liked about Last Jedi was uh, some of the, the grand... Uh, cinematography and mm-hmm. and Just art production design. yeah like yeah and mm-hmm. i thought that was very much in evidence here uh some of those shots of like uh the ships and uh and the landscapes oh, were yeah. like wow that's just gorgeous the, sci-fi scenery the ice island with the that's reflection exactly yeah. it. What's like, i don't think it's a reflection though i think you don't think so well, looking at it, like it didn't line up exactly. Because oh, I was yeah, really looking at that. It's just like seeing. I love seeing something in a Star Wars trailer and just like, well, this is new. Okay, no time to think about it. Moving on. <laughs> and then going back and studying it, like I don't know what I'm looking at. And I think it's you know, it's maybe not as frequent as it could happen with Star Wars, where it kind of wows you on a sci-fi level of just yeah. like I don't know what I'm looking at right now. This is too abstract and strange. Yeah. yeah. And then you see silly things like they're going to be in a boat across the waves going towards the Death Star. And it's like, okay, why, why in a boat? There's yeah. ships all over the place. <laughs> you got lots of ships, <laughs> yeah, man. I know. You don't need a boat. It's like using the skiffs in Last Jedi. It's like, <laughs> they look cool and they kick up the red dust, but what are we doing here, everybody? Yeah, yeah. This is Star Wars. I'm right? excited for it. It's it's interesting that it's like wrapping up this grand story, but like the grand story feels like it's been very piecemeal and like not... And these trailers haven't done anything to set it up, really? Super well yeah. constructed, so I don't really know what the conclusion is, but I'm fine. I'm excited for another Star you know, Wars. Yes, I hear you on that front, and... It, again, this is one one of the most challenging screenplays to write, you know? Yeah. But I was listening to the Empire Film Podcast, which I like a lot, and um, this lady in there had a good point about just, you know, we didn't know what the original trilogy was about before Return of the Jedi came out, then realized, oh, it's about the redemption of Vader, you know? Sure. And it's like, before this movie, what's this trilogy about? <sighs> new friends? <laughs> As, as somebody very insightfully said that the new trilogy is about Star Wars, which I still love that idea. Uh, that's ultimately what's going on here. It's just so self-reflexive okay, sure. and it's not necessarily a bad thing, well, but that's, that's, that's what we're thinking about. What I liked about the it. last one, Last Jedi, was like, if nothing else, at least it did something new where I yeah. felt it wasn't retreading. It felt like it was giving me something fresh. So I'm like hopeful that that's what this will do as well while also tying back and like well, will it referencing do it? all the other movies. If Palpatine just comes out and he's like, Snoke was my idea. It's like, that, that was me in a good mask. Palpatine, by the way. Thank it was you. nicely done. That's me in a mask. <laughs> also, Poe was me with a wig on. <laughs> if it, honestly, though, but to have him be the main bad guy of the overarching all nine yeah. movies, like, he is kind of one of the through lines. Like, yeah, of course. Back. Yeah. And so it would make sense to bring him back and be like, this is it, we're, at, we're actually done with this guy. No, I, I hope they would do something interesting if they did that, you know? I would hope... Make a case for why he had to come back for this <laughs> other than just uh, it's about we had to tie the saga together in some way and it's kind of the easiest way to do it but exactly what's gonna be funny is at the end of this movie when they kill him i assume he's not gonna win although that'd be awesome <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so but just, like how is palpatine standing over the graves of all of the heroes from all nine movies <laughs> and then he looks at the camera and says fade to black <laughs> And no, then he takes off his real mask and he's George Lucas. Yeah. Oh my god! And that, that is about evil. Star Wars. That's the big twist. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, what was I saying? Oh, um, Palpatine. Oh, how are they going to kill him? Because you, you can't get slow. You can't get more definitive than throwing him down an endless pit and then it explodes. And then explodes. <laughs> <laughs> but like they're going to have to pull like a. You know, Blade Runner 2049, where they do the equivalent of, like, taking his brain out and then step on it, just to, like, really <laughs> confirm. What if Obi-Wan, maybe he's a force projection projection from, like, the other side, and then Obi-Wan shows up and, like, cuts him in half? I, yeah. I'm not... I'm over here, too. <laughs> I'm not totally convinced that he is the definitive, like, bad guy of the story yet. Uh-huh. Really? Well, yeah, name yeah. one. Greta. Well, no, I, I think that the, there might be something that the story <laughs> is dealing with around, like, the idea of, like... 
maybe it's not about good guys and bad guys here. Um, mm-hmm. But we'll see. I mean, there's certainly... So a, who's the final boss fight? The War Machine that Benicio Del Toro was all about. Right. right. Yeah, 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 right. That's right, dude. Don't you? Wait. I don't know. I'm, the I'm willing to hold off on on my my judgment of it, but I think that there's some. Uh, they've done a good job of keeping this with all the interesting visuals they've shown us. There's still a lot of things about that story. Yeah. That we don't know, and I like yeah, that for sure. Especially um, with the trend in movie trailers being about having to spell everything out yeah. so that audiences know what the movie is. Yes, there's a luxury you have with it being such a massive franchise that people know, and just doing a tone piece like this, yeah, yeah. gets enough of the message. Across. But I also love where Disney marketing's at specifically with you think about like the Avengers or, or Marvel movies in general, where it's like, yeah, they they're trying to keep it ambiguous. On top of that, we now know that they just lie to you all the time right. and have fake shots or yeah. characters in shots that aren't there in the movie and vice versa. So it's like, which I'm Star can Wars I even believe for? this anymore? I yeah. guess I'm trying to think if Last Jedi did anything too sneaky. There would have been a couple shots that weren't in the movie for Last Jedi trailers, but I guess that's been too deceptive. I think like Force Awakens, I think there were more shots that were in the trailers that weren't in the movie, mm-hmm. if I remember. Well, like it, with the end game example, I think most of those scenes in the trailers were like the first half of the movie. Right. Which I love that. I love like going in and like, Halfway through the movie, you're like, I think I've seen everything from the trailers, so mm-hmm. I don't know what's next. Yeah, yeah. for like, sure. That's great. Yeah. Although I think towards the end of Endgame's marketing, they did reveal that Tony Stark, you know, comes back to Earth. Where it's like you could have done without that. Yeah, kind of like, I wish I hadn't seen that. Yeah, honestly. I mean, you assume, but still. Yeah. Uh, right. Endgame <laughs> my, spoiler, everybody. My takeaway on this trailer is that yeah. after a lifetime of having watched those movies dozens and dozens of times, mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna go see this movie. Mm. Really? You think yeah, so? I think yeah, I will. It's a must Why? watch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's. I guess that's that's my 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 point here is like, do they even need trailers for this movie? No. Isn't everybody who has ever watched a Star Wars movie going to go see this? Yeah. Uh, at least once. If Actually, not... Last Jedi fans are pretty mixed on, so I think oh. we're looking at zero attendees yeah. for <laughs> 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 Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Yeah, I think they could have gotten away with that with Endgame. I think that would have been really cool. Of just, yeah, like the nothing. trailer is just the logo and music, like the conclusion. Or Here's whatever. the date. Yeah. 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 Show up. You just, better be there. Oh, that'd be so just awesome. Having, if you don't want to have it spoiled the next day at work, you're going to be there tonight. Yeah. Having the guts night. of basically what, you know, Epic did with Fortnite, right? Of just like, we're yeah. a power spot. We'll shut this mf or down for a yeah. while. What yeah. are you going to do about it? With know? these like epilogues or, you know, climaxes, yeah. though, they like know they have a chance to break number one movie of all time. Yeah. The right. box office and I feel like they're right. just trying to push as hard as they can to get there. Break yeah. their own record. Yeah. yeah. Just like that. Uh, Join the other 15 top movies that Disney owns. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. Just like that Star Destroyer broke through the ice. That was weird, huh? Yeah. Like they've just been hanging out on the ice planet. Well, that's what you do sometimes. <laughs> Rise. Oh, this thing still turns on. Like, it's, it's so fun. <laughs> do you guys think that, there's going to be any time travel in this one? That's a theory I've seen. Oh, what? really? Going around, yeah. Oh, that'd be weird. I mean, effectively there will be because I think it's going to be Ghost Parade. It's going to be like Return of the King. Is that Return of the King where it's like Aragorn's like, huzzah! And then all the army of ghosts come out. It's going to be that, but like all the Jedi. Like yeah. Hayden Christensen, 1000% is in this movie. You think yeah. so? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. So do you need time travel if you have ghosts that are yeah. eternal? Right? Yeah, maybe not. But what would you want for time travel? I wouldn't want time travel. <laughs> <laughs> are you saying Aragorn's in this movie? I think that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, okay. thank you for yeah. listening. Um, Hey, and uh, as the wise C-3PO once said, Miller, uh, I want to take one last look at my friend. I know, man. I'm sorry to leave you, buddy. I, you know, I, I, uh, I'm going to be really sad not to be uh, working side by side with you, man. Yeah, we were literally opposite ends of the office, but our hearts were intertwined. <laughs> we really were. Uh, and we went on a lot of good trips together. That's the thing. There's a long stretch there. Yeah. Like I was doing a early, lot of cover stories. Early naughty aughts, uh, where yeah, it was a lot of Miller as the go-to cover story person, and you were always. Uh, Reese, you want to cover your ears, please. Uh, keep your headphones on though. Uh, <laughs> you were always the most prepared and the most clear, and I loved it. Like oh, for you. mapping everything out, for emails, for communicating with the studio. But here's what we want to do. Here's where our schedules looking like. All that stuff. To at times. I was a little annoyed of just like, <laughs> Miller's being so thorough, like speed it up. <laughs> only, on, you know, only in this situation. But then it's like, it's absolutely worth it. Like, it's so nice just to have this calming presence that's so on top of things mm-hmm. of just, hey, let's be nice, but let's be clear about what's happening here, here, and here. And here's what we want to get out of this. I like everybody to have clear expectations of each it's other. It's amazing. It's it's underappreciated at this company, I would say, Miller. Well, mm-hmm. and... and uh, Coming back at you, man, like, uh, you have done such a phenomenal job on both this podcast and the direction you've been taking the video stuff over these last years. Nice. It's just been awesome. That's very sweet. We'll miss uh, having you around. Very sweet. Yep. Um, okay, move on to emails. Here we go. Let's have fun. All right. Hey, 
And welcome back to the Game Informer Show. We have some wonderful emails that people sent in to podcast at GameInformer.com. People sent in questions, words of wisdom, feedback, um, dares, games, trivia, games. We have games two games this week. Ooh, I, I, love, like, I like the games. I love games too. Podcast at GameInformer.com. <laughs> um, the email address will live on no matter what, so keep writing in. Um, we're going to choose our favorite and then put our number one favorite on the big board. Is to the honor. big board stain? I'm not taking it. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe Andy will be like, that's not. I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe he'll say that at some point. We can't say for sure. I don't know if he knows those words. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's ever said that. Uh, anyways, uh, here we go. Joseph from Gresham, Oregon. Uh, thanks for having me. Oh, oh, are you welcome. serious? Oh, I'm sorry. Leo Vader's here. Joe Juba's here. Hi. And Ben Reeves is still oh, here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Boy, I'm blowing it, huh? Wow. Now I'm never going to get that raise. (laughs) (laughs) You really got to get a new host. Let's get a professional over here. Uh, Hey, Joseph says, my question is, which game came out at the wrong time? Wrong month because of being overshadowed or wrong year? I'm going to go with Gigantic and Battleborn. It's interesting. Battleborn just being so close to Overwatch, like they could not escape that. But yeah. hey, maybe now with Blizzard's situation, it's Battleborn's time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The servers are <laughs> off for that. But I think they could pull something together. <laughs> did we do did we do a cover on Battleborn? Yes. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Okay. I don't know. Yes, who wrote I spent that. two days at the at the studio. That was a uh, Tim Turry and then Jeff was back up, or vice versa. Is that game still running? I don't think I mean, it is. No. It is not? Yeah, I've 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 read that. It is not. I okay. haven't checked for myself. <laughs> oh, my God. They were very proud of that. And I, I do think, you know, say whatever you want about Battleborn, like going on the cover store trip, like it was interesting that like when they're at the top of the game, well, I know <laughs> aliens in there and stuff. But anyways, it, it would have, I, I, I agree with their point that it would have been very easy for them to keep making Borderlands considering how successful those games are. And for them yeah. to go like, no, we're going to take a detour and try something new for the industry. And then we're going to keep making Borderlands. Right. And yeah. then we're going to panic and realize, okay, never mind. <laughs> and then go back to it. But still, at least they tried, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think the, my answer to this one is a weird one that remember, so there was that time around like 2008, nine, even 10, that there were like a lot of those music games coming out. After band Guitar Hero. Hero. Yeah. Band Hero, DJ Hero, Guitar Hero, Rock Band, all this stuff. And then fast forward, I don't know what it was, a year... Like basically, even oh, Konami's Rock Revolution, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. even after, after all of the Me Too games on that front came <laughs> yeah. out, uh-huh. Ubisoft had that guitar game, Rocksmith, Rise of the Six Strings. Yeah, that I agree with. Except, like going again, cover story stuff. Going to Ubisoft for the South Park Fracture, but whole cover story. Like a lot of those devs worked on that, and like the takeaway was like. Yeah, it didn't blow up like Guitar Hero did, but like that game found its community and was overall a success for how cheap it was to produce for Ubisoft, which is awesome. And I don't even try cool. to show it is really it's cool. It's awesome. I, I should say I was not trying to make that a commentary on the, the, on the quality one more time. of that game yeah. as much as there was definitely a time to strike when the iron was hot for right. for music games, and, right. and Rocksmith came out about two years after that. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, talk about being overshadowed. Titanfall 2, of course. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, Battlefield. Yeah, yeah. Battlefield 5. Same Battlefield 5. day or, no, it was Battlefield one. 4, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was either 1, 4, or 5. Yeah, I don't know. I think it was at least 1. But yeah, EA putting both of those out and just it's Titanfall 2. What an amazing game so that really was just game. sent out to die. Yeah, yeah. it's absurd. Uh, I think of the classic, I believe this is what it was, where Assassin's Creed Revelations came out same day from the same company as Rayman Origins. It's like, what are you guys yeah. doing? Well, they Which did one that you multiple think? times because they well, did that when, with Prince of Persia and was it Beyond Good, Beyond Evil. Good and Evil? Yeah. yeah. Which is insane. What one do you think is being sent out to die in that case? I thought Rayman was, but... Which one I think has stood the test of time better? I think Rayman exactly. Origins. Yeah, that's yeah, that's my question because like I don't think I don't think Revelations tops the list. For but there's a lot of hype for Revelations still. Like I mean, coming out Brotherhood and stuff. Yeah. Plus, when that game came out, that's what everybody wanted to buy. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I suppose that's true. Remember when we went on that cover story trip? Today? I do remember Revelations. That. Yeah. I just yeah. had I I brought it up to you, but like I play a lot of bar trivia, and one of the one of the questions was, "What's the name of this building in Constantinople?" And it's oh, like yeah. that huge kind of dome thing, and I'm like. I spent two days at Ubisoft talking <laughs> about this building, and it I was don't like the remember. one building they kept. I know, up again I just and again. no idea. Yeah. It's it's really like a, what's that? Starshine Wonderstruck was the name of that movie. Starshine Wonderstruck. <laughs> 
The what? Incredible what? Starshine Wonderstruck? <laughs> Slumdog Millionaire. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Except I get every question wrong. That's the joke I was going for. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. In- including the name of the game show, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to be on Starshine Wonderstruck. <laughs> Okay. Uh, oh, he's starshined. <laughs> Do I see Wonderstruck? <laughs> uh, Rush from San Francisco. Fun name. He says, what console or game code name do you prefer over the real one? I think Revolution over Wii. Absolutely. Yeah, mm. that is really Although, good. Though, I understand, like, the rationale for Wii, I think, was that it's uh, globally pronounceable and understandable. And non-threatening. Yes. Versus, yeah. At the same time, Revolution just sounds way cooler. It's, way it's more era. badass and edgy, I guess, for that era. But yeah, Wii is almost more timeless. I remember uh, the magazine not too long ago interviewed Corey Schmitz, the designer who's designed the logos for Control and all, basically so much PlayStation stuff. Hmm. Um, but he was ta- talking about his favorite logos of all time. And he's like, well, that's kind of a word mark, but, um, but Wii. He's like, the name's great. It's clear. And then also like that logo, you can do so much with huh. that logo because it looks like two Wiimotes with the two eyes. Also looks like two people. Like it just works on so many levels. He's like, of course it's going to be a success. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's from, interesting. From, from any number of angles, that is a good move on Nintendo's part. But Revolution is a cooler name than Wii. I remember yeah. when I had my interview here at Game Informer, they had just announced the name of the Wii. And like one of the questions Andy asked me was like, what do you think of that name? And I was like, I don't know which way I should go with this, but I don't think it's great. And like, here's why. And I didn't know if they yes. were like, like, oh, how much of a gamer are you? Like, are you going to insult this or not? <laughs> Did you wear a suit to your interview? I wore a button-up tie, not mm. a suit. No pants? A button-up tie? Yeah, no pants. <laughs> <laughs> really nice tie. shoes, though. It's razor scootered in. Yeah. <laughs> hey, where's my desk? <laughs> <laughs> a hot opinion on this Wii name. Yeah. Uh. Uh, Andrew from Youngston, Ohio says, Hey, I was listening to the podcast uh, last week. Thank you. Thanks, man. Um, and one of your questions you all were discussing had to deal with Bluepoint Studios' next big com- up next upcoming big game. What if they are secretly making a Metal Gear remake? I personally have never played any Metal Gear games since Konami switched to the casino industry. I just wanted your thoughts. Mm. Mm. So what... what- if I understand this correctly, he's not talking about Metal Gear Solid. The fact that he says he's never played any Metal Gear games, I think he doesn't know what he said, but he accidentally said something better, which yeah, exactly. I'd be so much more excited about a Metal Gear remake than a Metal Gear Solid remake. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I agree. I mean, Metal Gear Solid has been remade already, <laughs> and yeah. I don't I mean, need that again. Still a pretty good game, like tight game gameplay-wise, I think. I think the it first still one? plays well. Yeah, I think visually it doesn't look age as well, but... I think it still plays well. I mean, yeah. at, at some point, I think it's okay. That game has been revisited enough times that I think it's okay to just let Metal Gear Solid be. But those old Metal Gear 1 and 2, yeah, to actually bring those, oh, man. It'd be interesting to have the oldest ones be the most technically advanced ones. Yeah. All the time. yeah. Well, especially, especially given the way Metal Gear Solid 5 ends yeah mm-hmm. i think that would be man to bridge you that, this, so much. this had not occurred to me really and i think that this is a fantastic well no all of the speculation that, that yeah uh, that i had was around whether or not they do solid i just mm-hmm. assumed that uh those two were off limits plus like the, mm. the only thing just to rain his parade is i think konami would want to do that in-house i mean the middle your survive team there's still a lot of talent there you know, um, and so like Konami would probably want something for they them to do. Them. So that would make sense to have them do it instead of contracting with uh, an independent studio like Blue The Point. story in those original games is pretty thin at this point. I think you'd like, probably combine them, right? Although well, then but it'd even be... the two games, like it's still not compared to a Metal Gear story, it's still yeah, not that big. For so sure. like to flesh that out more would be interesting. Although if you bundled them, it would be weird just to have like big boss fight and he's back. Like it'd be a bizarre structure yeah. of like burn him with the hairspray and then he's still oh, around. Oh man, that would be a... Yeah, I, I, I want this. I want this to be true very much. Yes, I very think much they're so. remaking Metal Gear Survive. What's, <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's more likely though, like that they remake those original games or that they reboot the franchise entirely? It's like still use the I name think remake. but reboot it. I don't, yeah, a rebooting is such a tall order. I don't think there's a yeah. need to. Right, I think and it's make... almost less reliable for to make oh, money yeah. than a remake. Okay. Exactly. I don't think anyone. I think there's still too much like lingering hostility out there for a Metal Gear reboot, not helmed by Kojima to be. Yeah, for sure. Well, but what's Konami gonna do? Is the thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Good point. By the way, you know, on my final episode, I'd like to just uh, have a message to a certain community out there, and it's 
years ago when all that talk was about the Metal Gear movie from Jordan Vote Roberts, and I said, this movie is never going to happen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and I was lit up in the comments. We were being like, he's talking about it. They're doing interviews. It's in production. Where is he now, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> you didn't see it? Oh, wait, did I miss it? Yeah. That sounds badass. Dude, it is. The it best is picture best winner? Best movie of the year. Does uh, everyone owe you a steak dinner? One steak dinner. Please, put it in my mouth. Oh, yeah. Do you have any lingering bets? I do. Hansen? I what, do. What are the I ones just, that are I just still dug on the those people? out. Um, Kim, this buffoon. <laughs> no. I love her. But she bet me that Valve would talk about or announce Half-Life 3 before Left 4 Dead 3. Okay. And I was like, no way. And so I'm very happy with that. Can I get in on well, that bet? <laughs> against her? Hang on, Leo, you I seem mean, like you're squinting hard. They talk about Left 4 Dead 3? They haven't yet, but still, like, in terms of what would make well, more sense for a modern Valve? I like, don't know. At sure. some point, you're just going to be nursing that bet until you're, like, 90 years old. Yeah. I, and you can't eat steak anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other, one, the other one is a bet with Kyle that's still ongoing, which is, I bet him, and this is bolder, I don't know why I decided to do this, I bet him that Metroid Prime 4 would not be released on the Nintendo Switch. That seems insane to me. If it's called like a Super Switch or like Next Generation or whatever that divide is, that was, huh. that was it. I just, I was pessimistic about how long Metroid Switch 4... Switch Lite? Yeah, exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're going you're gonna to eat it on that one, I think. Uh, uh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe like Tail End. Considering they released Samus Returns like three months ago on the 3DS or whatever the hell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Metroid Prime 4 on 3DS, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's technically Metroid Prime 4 colon Metroid Hunters 2. Oh. <laughs> Isn't there one that, there were a couple that resolved though, like doesn't Jim Riley owe you a steak or something? Um, I owe him a steak for making a terrible bet, which I stand by, oh. which was before the launch of the Wii U, I bet him that within the first year, comparatively, the Wii U would sell more than the Wii. Which seems insane in retrospect. Yes. But it let seems me point insane out, then. Let me point out... The Wii had insane shortages that entire first year. They were never in supply enough to sell off the shelves. So I'm like, that number isn't as big as it should be. Plus, Wii was such a phenomenon, it wasn't impossible to expect the follow-up to a phenomenon to do well. And that was my mistake. (laughs) Yeah, and your mistake was expecting them to do something about the shortages also. I guess so. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. never really did that. Hmm. Yeah, I'm still trying to find one. (laughs) Weren't the Switches also short? I like this. Yeah. You see? I'm yeah. right. Um, hmm. Andrew thing. from Youngston, Ohio, he wrote in about this, you know, and then he also says, but what if Blue Point Games is working on one of the following? If you could had to choose one, okay. Joe Juba, what would you choose? Me specifically? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're responsible for what these guys do next. Okay. Legendary, Legend of Dragoon. Mm-hmm. That would be a fun remake. I didn't think about that with that Sony connection because they are making something for the PlayStation 5. So you think Sony would want to lean into that? That would be an interesting one. Uh Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross, or Siphon Filter. Are we talking about they're doing a remake of this? Yes. From like Resident Evil style esque remake. What would you want? I mean, Chrono Trigger, absolutely. Chrono. Really? But would it ever live up to how beloved that game is? I mean, I don't think it. I think we live in a world where it is okay to acknowledge that remakes and reboots that. Uh, pay homage to something else or that they're not going to be as good as the mm-hmm. first thing. But that doesn't mean that... <laughs> well, I would say that the Resident Evil 2 remake is, I don't know, possibly better. What are you talking about? Possibly. No. No, I'm going to say no, it's better. Fair. I'll just say it's better. It's but better. don't you want to see Chrono Trigger with like lifelike graphics? Oh, yeah, would it be a change in skin? perspective? I mean, imagine, imagine Chrono Trigger, though, with like Dragon Ball Z uh, fight, or Dragon Ball Fighter Z or whatever. Fighters. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing. No, I mean, like, that's how it would look, right? Oh, that'd be... Yeah. Okay, you Blue sold point me. specialty. You sold me on it. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, that'd be fun. Um, let's see. Zach E. Oh, little Zach E. From Minneapolis. He says, Dear Benjamin and the other beautiful people at the table. It does not say that. <laughs> Wait. Oh. You, you added that, that in. you added? Oh. No, he wrote it. This is Ben Hansen. I'm writing this now. <laughs> uh, he says... My wife surprised me on my birthday the other week by taking me to an escape room. She then locked me... No. Uh, it had a fun castle theme. And it was challenging and clever, and we were able to escape with only five minutes left. <laughs> Definitely a great bonding experience. Look at that. Bringing people together. Hmm. I'd argue marriage is the ultimate <laughs> escape room. Am I right? Hey, oh. <laughs> is your wife listening to this? Wait, does that mean it's a joy <laughs> to be a part of? <laughs> Anyways, it's very it's it's fun that's, team building. I have fun with escape rooms. <laughs> and you always escape marriages with only five minutes left. <laughs> 
<laughs> I guess it depends on how the marriage is ending. <laughs> uh, my question is, do you consider escape rooms to be a game? If so, how come you don't give them review scores? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good question for Joe. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't they be games, I guess? You're trying to figure things out. It's got a puzzle element to it. Are yeah. puzzles games? Like is a Rubik's, Rubik's Cube? Yeah. I mean, do I consider them video games? Of no. Not. Are they games, though? In They're... the same way that, like, Tag is a game. I'm yeah. sorry, the game. <laughs> Absolutely, though. Yeah, why are. wouldn't Tag be a game? Uh, hey, look, I agree. I'm saying it's number one game. We all saw the movie. I mean, there, there, are, there are lots of uh, video games out there that are like escape rooms, too, and we... I mean, they're sort of visual novels. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, room. I mean, we, yeah, we, yeah, exactly. The room, or even some of the, like nine 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 is kind mm-hmm. of like that. Yeah, know. yeah. I went yeah. to an escape room with my father in law, and it was like Excalibur themed, and mm. like there was the sword in the middle of the room that you had to pull out, but it was like magnetized, and you had to like attach these, collect these things from around the room, attach it to the pedestal, and then pull out the sword. The gems. Gems, yeah. What did I say? Jim? No, I mean, was it like yeah. a medieval theme? You were getting orbs of power? Yeah, exactly. Or that kind of thing. Interesting. But like after the third one, before we'd found the fifth, the fourth one, I like decided to pull the sword out and it like came out. <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess we can do this. We can figure it out. And like the guy from behind the counter who was watching us like burst into the room. He's like, how'd you do that? You're not supposed to be able to do that. And that man was Merlin? <laughs> that's right. And that's when you became King Arthur. <laughs> and then I stabbed him through the heart with the sword. Smart. Like, it's part of the game. Everybody run. <laughs> I know I wasn't supposed to be able to do this. I'm the chosen one. I had, <laughs> Stay we, back. We had a similar bad experience. Uh, some friends and I did an escape room here in St. Paul. And uh, one, of, one of my friends, there's like a room... Or there was a box that had a combination lock on it. Mm-hmm. And we managed to guess through the wrong sequence of events, guess the correct combination oh to the box. God. Oh, that's amazing. Which meant that we sequence broke the entire puzzle. Hell so yeah. we didn't we actually didn't escape because we screwed ourselves over so bad because we weren't sure what puzzles were like before us in the sequence and oh, which ones no. were after us. But we didn't know. We only realized this after the fact because when we solved the combination, we thought we did it. We thought we put it together correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Oh, weird. we really screwed ourselves over. I liked yeah. a, I did one uh, as well in, in Northeast Minneapolis, and it was, it was pretty lame. It was like sci-fi themed. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, if you don't do it in time, a monster will come out and get you. Space alien that's, that's on board the ship or whatever. And then like we ran out of time and we lost. And then, like, just the door opened, and the guy's like, all right, well, get out of here. The it's like space guy, alien, yeah. ain't you? Yeah. Does, it, does it kill you to have, like, a mask or, like, just play a roar yeah. or something? <laughs> just get like, a werewolf thing or something going, just, yeah. come on. It's Even so... if you still just come out and say, I killed you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then, honestly, you I just open the door and go, Brah! Yeah, it's okay, funny. Okay, you're done. Yeah, 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 anything. And, like, it's so funny because, like, you know, beforehand, they're like, don't talk about this. You can't talk about this with the outside world. And then, like, afterwards, we're, like, the group that did it with we were like intermingling with another group at some party or something and i was telling stories and like remember this one person was like, giving me a look like are you nuts like you can't talk about that You're like <laughs> you, you signed that paper we're like it's not <laughs> i'm not a cia agent like who the f cares in you certain escape rooms you are oh, that's, right. that's right that's right well, hold on the fbi is knocking on the door <laughs> no, right? no. i talk to you <laughs> Uh, I did an escape room once. Loved it. Very fun. We hung out afterwards and talked to the guy who was running it. You know, you have the guy watching through cameras and making sure you're doing everything right. What? What kind of pervert escape room did you go to? <laughs> <laughs> and we asked him if there's anything like weird that's ever happened in an escape room, any fun stories or whatever. And he said the most awkward escape room we had was uh, a bunch of teenagers came in for an hour to do an escape room and they just split up and made out the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even try to solve the puzzle. Yeah. Brilliant. Like they're just teenagers who couldn't make out at home. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's the only place to get away? It's yeah. dark. That's an expensive makeout right yeah, there. Really yeah, is. They just like stop it. and like half try to figure out a puzzle and then go back to making out. Yeah. Sounds hilarious. Ultimate puzzle. How do we untangle our tongues? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun. Love's the greatest puzzle of all. Hanson, remember that on your way out of here. Uh, I, I consider love a game, actually. Because oh, it's a puzzle. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And I'm winning. <laughs> That's right. Um, Tyler Steele writes in uh, and says, Good morning, GI crew. Good morning. Wake up. Good morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> good afternoon. Uh, Hello. Five more minutes, please. <laughs> oh, should we just wait? Five minutes? Yeah, five more minutes, please. Okay. <laughs> um, I only recently beat Red Dead Redemption 2. Now enjoying the multiplayer. Thank you for championing it, Leo. You're welcome. <laughs> that little indie title. 
I was hoping we could take time to reflect on the story's motif and how it applies to our lives. It reminded me most of friends growing apart and this all of a sudden feeling where you no longer really know your best friend. On a broader scale, it evokes the changing of times and what society does with its leftovers whose value is no longer recognized. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. What reflections, conclusions, and emotions <laughs> rise in response to Red Dead Redemption 2 in retrospect? My head is still reeling from what he's saying. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is Red Dead Redemption 2 us? Oh my gosh. <laughs> we are the Red Dead. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it, it is weird. It's like, you know, <clears throat> why did birds... Um, no, why did like Dutch and, and, well, and Arthur's um, story like we, we like, you know probably shouldn't go into spoilers just because it's about to come out on PC and I'm sure there are plenty of, You're pe right. pe plenty of people who have been waiting to finally play this story. You're right. But it, I think, you know, this this level, I think high level yeah, stuff, sure. I think, but I think that is an interesting take of like probably why that story hit me in particular. I think of like, you know, just kind of growing apart from friends from high school, mm -hmm. you know, where they're just on a different track and even could be a positive or negative track. And in mm -hmm. both ways, it's just kind of that frustration. It's like, what? Like, how are we not on the same page here anymore? Like very clearly this sucks. <laughs> like, don't do this. Oh, okay. All right. Gonna keep doing that. Yeah. Well, all right. There. You know, like. Yeah. It, go ahead. <laughs> well, I was gonna offer a controversial opinion. So yes. if you have something you want to share, yeah, uh, I was just it. gonna say I don't think the story of Red Dead Two is that good. I think the characters <laughs> are, are very interesting. Serious? Like, yeah, but it's just like a series of like moments, and like they're not very well connected sometimes. Like that's what really bothered me. And like there's a like especially at the end, they have a really good moment, right? And so it leaves you with this good feeling. But like most of the time, I was like, how is all this connected? And like it's just the characters are so interesting to hang out with, and I think that's why people really. I like think the story. big picture is pretty simple. It uh, is by very story, simple. do you mean just like, oh, now we're working with these plantation owners, like that level of the yeah, story? Yeah, and it's kind of like, well, without going into spoilers, Dutch is always kind of like, I got a plan, I got a plan, but it's like thirty hours of that same thing, him saying the same thing over and over but again. I, I think that's the strength of it yeah. is that it creates this sense of that outlaw lifestyle because life isn't like life is a lot of the moments that you have with the people around you and a lot less of, I mean, like what's, what's the narrative of your week? Well, my week isn't a story. <laughs> Reeves. It is. Oh my gosh. It <laughs> makes so much sense now. <laughs> no, but I, I mean like, I, th that's what I mean is that I think the game is less concerned about telling a larger story like that as, mm -hmm. as much as conveying that kind of day to day, week to week, bond and development of this of this yeah. group and the way that they're kind of on the precipice of of a change in time that, that like where they're just uh have declining relevance uh -huh. I think. and you have just hours and hours of memories with these characters you love where pretty much nothing was going wrong <laughs> yeah and like you have all these happy memories due to how long the game is i mm -hmm. think that is something that i like about it well i think that's the thing it was so like focused on like recreating a time and a place and it, they did a really good job with that and you're experiencing that time and place with these characters that feel real so it feels more like real life rather than like an interesting narrative is what i'm trying to say is like sure. the narrative to me wasn't really that interesting it's like the people and the time and the place I think setting. I zooming out the simple plot of kind of the arc of that story combined with the writing and performances, like, that's all I need, isn't it? Well, if yeah. you, like, take that plot, though, and you, like, trimmed out a lot of sections, I think I would have enjoyed it more. Oh, look, I was lit up <laughs> and are spoiled for talking about how I would edit Red Dead 2 because everyone says it's pristine and well, I'd no, say but certain sections. No, you had specifically bad ideas about things to specifically cut. Specifically correct ideas uh -huh. about what to trim to make more impactful. Uh -huh. but I yeah. think the way it is like real life is what makes it stronger for me. Yeah. Yeah, Riffs, how about Great. you sit down before you fall down? Hey, I'm not knocking anybody for enjoying Boo. it. I'm glad they liked Boo. it. I'm just saying, you're wrong. I'm just <laughs> uh, James from Cincinnati. Great question saying, why isn't Matt Cotto on the show more? He's a delight. Yeah, he's funny. Oh. I, the only person at Game Informer that I never went on a cover story trip with, Matt Cotto, has not been oh. on a cover story trip in nine years. Because we very, do very few racing or sports games. The on last the cover. cover trip he went on got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. The Lord of the Rings game? Yeah. That's funny. He w there was talk of doing uh, some Forza around the launch of the Xbox One. Which one was that? Three? Four? Xbox Three, yeah. Xbox Three. Um, and Cotto was going to do that one, and then, and then that shifted. I think the Titanfall and was like, oh, missed Cotto yeah. by a millisecond. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, Mark Delaney writes in uh, saying, hello. 
Uh, I'm a freelance games journalist, and I greatly appreciate last week's deep dive on writing reviews, Joe Juba. Oh. I honestly already practiced a lot of Joe's tips. Okay. Oh, all right, all <laughs> um, right, smart guy. And I think it's because I grew up a big fan of GI. Oh, oh so maybe smart guy. guy. All right, all right. I'm a confident reviewer, but a less confident interviewer. Could you do a similar deep dive on how to interview people effectively? Yeah. Hanson, I think you are a good one to give some tips on this. Oh, that's very sweet. For sure. Uh, I would recommend listening. <laughs> <laughs> it happens all the time where people are just too focused on their questions right. and moving down their own list. That, like, in my mind, the perfect interview is start up front with the most interesting, biggest, meatiest question, get the response, and then. Best case scenario is just if the rest of that interview is just follow-up question, follow-up question, follow-up question, just trying to dive in deep. Right. It's just that surface level scatter shot. You're not doing anybody favors. And there's like, there's simple stuff too. Like uh, if it's in person or I guess even, you know, over Skype or something, like I think people reflexively mirror your tone because like they're nervous a little bit doing an interview, right? And so if you're more relaxed or you're more casual, like this is a very dumb thing, but I, I always do it well asking questions or setting up cameras on cover story trips, I'll always be as, trying to be as relaxed as possible, faking it, of course. And like, <laughs> chill, like I'll swear, just even in the question, I'll swear and then say it in a way that I know I can edit around that just yeah. to convey that like, hey, it's just chill. Like, you know, yeah. I, yeah. what is the deal with this fucking system? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. whatever it is, right? And it's like, just Pointing letting them boss. know that like, yeah. I'm yeah. that casual, like yeah. they will reflexively kind of match your mood or the like- Sam is fart, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or like, you know, a very basic thing is like, not to uh, full on YouTuber lifestyle. That sounds horrific, but like bringing your energy up if they're pretty low energy. Yeah. Cause like they will try and match you no matter oh, what you're yeah. at. And if you're That's just good. really somber, like they're going to stay low key. But if you're like, what the? F-? And you make them laugh, <laughs> you laugh, like they will probably be funnier in response. You know, yep. people yep. want to be like the other person in the room. This is similar to what you just said. Uh, so I'll just repeat your, yeah. your Boo. tips. Uh, but like if you write down your questions, you have like five questions or so, for example, Try to internalize them so you kind of know generally what you want to talk about so that way you're not constantly referencing your questions. Yeah. So it's like, it's more about like, because honestly, you'll ask a couple questions and like, they'll say something and you want to be able to respond to that, Mm -hmm. like what they're asking or what they're saying. Like, oh, I should get more on this. And I think, I think they appreciate it too, just to feel like you are listening. And so this is another thing I do way too much uh, on the podcast. If you go back to the archive of the interviews or whatever, is I'll often say uh, like, you know, uh, just, you know, last week talking about Jackbox, one mm-hmm. of the guys, he's like, oh, the trick with directing is like, you know, tying the art style together. There's so many different questions, blah, 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 blah. And he moves on then. And then it's like, as the follow up, I go like, oh, you mentioned like tying the art style together. That reminds me of this, you know, like yeah. just that, like repeating something they said, just so they know that you're actually listening and paying attention. Because yeah. hopefully they are interesting enough where you want to do that anyway. Like that helps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's also important, I think, I guess kind of on on Ben's point is like my very first interview that I did for Game Informer is the worst one I've given, uh, I I think understandably, Mm -hmm. or conducted, is I wrote down all my questions and then I read them word for word, which you don't have to have your questions memorized. I don't always have like the exact phrasing memorized, but at this point, when I go into an interview, my notes, my piece of paper is like a little dash and maybe two or three words to be like, mm-hmm. ask a question about this thing. Yeah. Ask a question about this thing. And to Hanson's point, it's important to know the context of the interview. Like, what is it for? What is it being used for? Because yeah. when it's something like a podcast interview, you want to dig into that, have some interesting stories. When it's something like, I'm writing a cover story, it's a little harder to go in with the, hey, I'm just going to ask some you know, cool follow-up questions because there's just some very basic mechanical yeah. details that you need to And get. it doesn't need to segue or feel smooth at all. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So yeah. sometimes for, especially for when we're sitting down with creative directors on games for a cover story interview, those are the ones that are a lot more scattershot. And we don't usually even post those directly because they are, they are bad interviews from the sense of just... <laughs> Yeah, going from top to bottom. Mm-hmm. They're full of good information, but that inform- you're, it's being asked in a format to be integrated and contextualized in a different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, absolutely. And, and yeah, overall too, it's just, this is a slippery slope, but like go where they're going. Like, and that can be tricky if they're very media savvy and PR trained and they've done the same interview a thousand times, right? But hopefully you have good enough questions to get them a little bit out of their groove and make them look on their own work in a new way. Mm-hmm. And then 
don't just stick to your format of like, okay, I wanted to ask about the past and then talk about the new game. If like you introduce them on the podcast, for example, and you say, yeah, hey, how's it going over there? And they say, oh boy, life's been crazy because trying to lock down this sound mix. It's like, okay, I was going to talk about the sound mix later, but let's talk about yeah. it now. Like just be fluid enough with your own rundown to just try and make it smooth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it. Right, Leo? <laughs> That's, yeah. That's every general for an interview. Don't ask yes or no questions. I mean, there's time oh, and sure. place for it where you're like, I just need to rapid fire get this info. But like in general, like instead of like, do you think it was a good idea to do this thing? Ask like, why was that a good idea to, when you did that thing? Like, yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah, zoom in out. Yeah, for bit. sure. And then also it's like, especially if they're on a press tour or something, like they also would like to have fun. Don't be scared of having fun with your questions. And again, that can immediately slide into what does Samus's butt smell like yeah, over and over again? stupid questions. Oh, well, have you seen the rapid fire show? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's, that's constructed to do that. Uh-huh, Questions yes. they get all the time. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. But just, you know, have some jokes in there. Get them off their edge a little bit, you know, with some jokey questions or just really blunt questions as long as you're being polite about it, right? Like there's a way in kind of a more Howard Sterny way of just being like, really though, what's going on here? And they say that and it's like, nah, come on, you're bullshit me like seriously what's going on like ha- being loose enough to follow up in that way i think really helps yeah, yeah that's good don't yeah don't get confused don't confuse asking the hard questions with being an ass yeah hmm. right yeah yeah um let's see a thousand people wrote in talking about that they also have the stress stream uh of forgetting that you enrolled in a class in college like, <laughs> it is universal from what i can tell which is very nice did hmm. you have the one where you couldn't open your locker I was constantly I forgetting so. my locker combination in my dream, and I could never get it open. And then no. the second I got it open, the bell rang. Oh, no. Yeah. And you woke up and you rubbed your doorknob off because you were just like, oh, okay. <laughs> <Who's that>? my <laughs> doorknob. <Yeah>. Gross. <laughs> okay, next. Uh, Adam Sir- Sarai from Rockville, Maryland says, Hello, crew. Now, this is a good gamer ass question. I'm so happy with this. Is the luck stat the most underused stat in video games? How would you change the luck stat to make it interesting enough to actually invest in it? What a great well. One. So okay, no, Cyberpunk does cool. So that's kind of a cool, th- cool thing. Lucky like event. if that's their luck stat, like I'm more interested in doing the cool stat than the luck stat. So, Do you like, think it is the luck stat? I don't know. Isn't that the charisma? It might type be the stat? charisma stat. Yeah, but even about? the the principle stands. All right. No, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Rename luck to cool. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fixed. Luck spot? Done. Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. Luck borders too? <laughs> <laughs> luck hand loop. <laughs> Hot eats, luck treats. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Drippy <So>. McLuck? <laughs> I yeah. feel like I can't even contribute to this. <laughs> it's, it's very good. Uh, I like the concept, though, of like luck being overrated because I almost never filled the luck stat with anything. I'm like, eh, yeah. I don't need that. It's just because yeah. you don't trust the developer to make it worthwhile, right? I, yeah, I want bullets to be bouncing off my head. <laughs> yeah. I want it to really matter. Your yeah. eyeballs. Yeah. yeah. That's the pro- I, I like the way, I like the clarification that it's not that luck is underused in the sense that players don't invest in it because it's not good. The implication is. The luck stat is never cool. Mm-hmm. It's always some like tiny buff to your critical chance or tiny buff to finding better loot. Or it's, it's, it's the sort of comprehensive minor boosts rather than a thing that is noticeable. You know how you fix it? How do you fix it? Mr. Magoo it. Enemies what? are charging towards you and they're stepping on landmines. Yeah. Oh. You know, clotheslining each other. It's yeah. just like a Deadpool 2 character. Yeah. Yeah, th- yeah exactly. Absolutely. That's how you do it. I like the idea of like, yeah, just... I'm a walking tornado. Like weird happenstances are always happening all around. You're me. just yeah. fortunate yeah. from having yeah. solid, right? And then yeah. once you max it out, you're just unkillable. No, that's a no. That's a great idea. The idea of luck not being you are so lucky as much as highlighting everyone around you is horribly unlucky. It's like yeah. you make everybody yeah. else unlucky. Yeah. But what? Okay. Like yeah. I mean, yeah. that's Black great cat. if you could like pause things and really know. But if you just see an enemy like get shot, how would you know? That They'd be like, no, luck. no, it'd be like, luck kill. they Five shoot, and then they're like, oh, I shot myself in the <laughs> face. The bullet just comes uh, up the wrong yeah. way. <laughs> <constantly say>. Exactly. <laughs> or, oh. or one marauder says to the other, look out for my landmine there. <laughs> what? Boom. Oh, well, that meteor shower's coming down on us <laughs> real hard. <laughs> just a giant piano falls on their head for I no reason. I cut in half pretty bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Oh, my heart! <laughs> <laughs> the final boss. Yeah, just a heart attack. Like, That'd be amazing. Dave from Peru, Illinois says, Hey, GI crew, I've been wondering lately why there isn't a first-person RPG similar to Skyrim set in the D&D universe. D&D is more popular than ever. I know Larian Studios is working on Baldur's Gate 3, but being able to explore Baldur's Gate in first person instead would blow my mind. Am I the only one who thinks this? I know D&D is huge right now. Maybe bigger than ever. I see mm-hmm. a lot of people talking about it. Do people love the world in particular? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just started playing D&D and like you think so much about these locations that it's like, I want, I just went through Nomen Guard. I would like to see a depiction of that very badly. Okay. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. And another thing... A lot of people play sort of homebrewed campaigns where, you know, like like it's not even necessarily a, a world that's come out of a book. Matt Miller created a whole world that I played a campaign in that's not in any source book you'll find. But Jesus. a lot of players, there's a sort of common ground there. Like if you're in if you're in this world, everyone has visited that city. Which is really cool. Yeah. And and there's a sense of you know, sort of shared experience there that I think people would love to experience, but I think the trick is when, like, ultimately, Wizards of the Coast owns that. That's their property. Let's raid that coast and get it from them. So if you want to do a big game that is a huge open world like Skyrim, if a developer is going to invest that kind of time in it, Mm -hmm. I can understand why you'd want to own the world yourself. (sighs) But, dude, I mean, Bethesda and some of these studios... Just chock full of D and D nerds. I feel like uh, if they had the choice, they'd yeah, be like, "Oh, of course." Like, yeah, but maybe. from the money perspective, right? But haven't they made D and D games in the past already? Well, like, I don't it's know. Not like a, <laughs> I feel no, like you know, D and D, right? Yeah, th- I mean, th- there are a lot of D and D games. There aren't there aren't any that I know of that are of the scope of something like Skyrim. Okay, when sure. was the last time they tried something other than like CRPG? Well, let's see. Alex in the booth, can you Google that, please? <laughs> Seriously, I'd, I'd love to know. Um, we'll give you time to, there was to research Demon it. Stone back on PS2. That was a long time ago. Really? They should make a game out of my D&D campaign, which took place in a city full of penguins that spoke in Cockney accents. Oh, really? I remember yeah. we played uh, D&D when I was in high school, and like the guy who was the DM... Every time you started a new character, you always appeared in the middle of the city and you were naked. And that was like his big thing. Like a Terminator <laughs> thing? He always wanted you to appear in the middle of the city and you were naked and That's you had so no funny. memory of what you were doing before. Describe really your funny. body. <laughs> Slowly. Hulking. <laughs> you can't see me behind this. <laughs> big, DM and, big and terrible. <laughs> what's, uh, what's Miller like as a DM? That must be heavenly. Oh, he's fantastic. Yeah. I cannot yeah. imagine. I mean, I, I've, I've only played with Miller and my friends as DMs. So we all sort of... We all sort of branch out from the Matt Miller school of DMing, so mm. I think we're all a little similar. I wouldn't know necessarily how... I don't really know any other way to play. And yeah. you turn the corner and you're naked. But he re- <laughs> he really subscribes... Big butt, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I can see everything. Describe your hairiness on a scale of 1 to 18. Roll uh, for hairiness. <laughs> <laughs> Super hairy. Hairy if your luck stat's high enough. Make a pungency check. I don't know why Gross. Miller became Lucas <laughs> in terms of like... <laughs> no, M- Miller really subscribes to the idea of D&D and tabletop gaming in general as a communal storytelling experience. Mm-hmm. So it's he's not one of those DMs who's... I mean, we follow the rules, but he's not someone who who shrugs and says like, well, the rules say your character dies, so this thing that you're really invested in is now just sort of screwed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. There are... There's danger... But it's all sort of built into a much more like narrative focus rather than a, like really crunching the numbers. Kind Does of he focus. do voices? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, he Alex? becomes a different person. Really? Yeah, it's a metamorphosis. Uh, Alex, oh, if you turn on, him. yeah, I played a couple times. Oh, that's sweet. Uh, channel five in there. Uh, sorry to put you on the spot. Is not channel five? No. Oh, oh boy. it was channel five. Two years ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. It's like That's you don't why I got to check out, man. Yeah. Let's get a professional in here. Seven? It, it's the third from the end, which I think is ten. Hello. What oh. number was it? Is this it? Is this... Uh, You're in. It says... I think it just says computer mic. There's a little sticky here. Oh, that's confusing. Hmm. Anyways, what did you learn about D&D? So ask the question again. I was panicking. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it. What was the, the last non-isometric like, RPG... Dungeons and Dragons game. 
There was a Dungeons and Dragons online. That was more of a oh, third yeah. person behind oh, the back. Oh, that's I believe. a good point. That is exactly yeah. that. I mean, it, yeah. well, it's close enough. Is it? And it's not still going. We're all confident. No, I, was I, it Turbine? I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Mar- Margaret played it a ton. Really? Yeah. I think I might. I played a bunch. Did I review that game? What? Did I make that? <laughs> Hold <laughs> on. Am I online right now? That's amazing. Um, okay, n- no big deal, Alex. If you can't find anything, I will say GI has a list of the best non-RPG D&D games. <laughs> Game Informer. Well, I wouldn't look at that. Are you what are the me? non-RPG ones? Yeah, I'd love to know. It's from Mr. Miller himself. Please. Oh, oh. let's see. And if you Use it th- in one of his voices. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know his voices. Come on, dude. Uh, yeah. Um, hey. has, do his Lord. most offensive. Oh, one. Miller. <laughs> <laughs> Lords of Waterdeep. Oh, nice. Um, Is that a game? Dragon yeah. Fire. Mm. No heard. real games. Yeah. Are these ones that Miller is pitching? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Miller yeah. made. Here's a bunch of games I'd like to make. Uh, Assault of the Giants from WizKids. Betra- betrayal at Baldur's Gate. Is that like. What? Betrayal on. Are these are these tabletop are these board games? games? Yeah, isn't that what you asked? Oh, oh they're oh non-video God. games. I Leo, I can't take it. <laughs> Did you hear that? I can't take this. Remember, every time you're fumbling in the booth and it's like charming. Yeah, it's cute. Yeah. What is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna give the poor intern a complex <laughs> here. <laughs> Great job, Alex. That's fine. Thanks, Right on the money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never hitting this button again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You can actually rip that button off the mixer. <laughs> oh, he's walking out. <laughs> uh, Michelle from Illinois says, Hi, everybody. Oh. Hi, Michelle. Oh, hello. hello. Hey, Michelle. My what family and I loved guessing which Columbo Joe Juba showed at his Columbo's Day party from the clues he posted on Twitter. Ah, okay. Joe, mm-hmm. would you like to explain uh, the one thing nerdier than D&D on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Every year, uh, I... For the last six years now, I've hosted a Columbo's Day uh, the weekend before Columbus Day, Mm -hmm. which started at a time when I was looking at at, uh, our shared calendar once, and I told my wife, like, oh, Columbus Day. For a second, I read that as Columbo's Day and was like, wow, that would be really cool if we could do that. Yeah. And Amy said, well... We're adults. You can do that. Yeah, we don't have to celebrate Christopher Columbus <laughs> on that day. And That's the end for the party. Th- that was all the permission I needed to really go above and beyond what anyone would reasonably do to uh-huh. celebrate a fake holiday uh, for several years, which means that I make little buttons and I get party favors. I have purchased framed Columbo art. Uh, what? Blow up doll. <laughs> Do you put more work into anything else than Columbus Day? Oh, no. That is by far the biggest event I put on every year. <gasps> Extra Life yeah. needs help, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I have a Columbo, have I have a Columbo co- like costume, essentially, that I put on oh my once God. a year for Columbo's Day. The, the I get a too. cake. You custom get a giant made. custom Columbo's Day cake. And then over the last you know, several years that you've been doing this, you bring it into the office the, ne- the next Monday. Yes. And... I don't want to make any judgments about the attendance of Columbo's Day parties, but there's like four slices <laughs> taken out of it. And then I have to, I have no choice but to eat like seven slices of cake in that day because there's so much there. Yeah, there's usually, I mean, I like having a nice big cake for it. I like the idea of, well, because then that opens up some design avenues, right? Like it, you can it, really get the pores. It really gets, oh, this guy. <laughs> it really looks cool. Uh-huh. And then there's also always, always the opportunity for like people generally Columbo's day has some wavering attendance sometimes, right? Where (laughs) there are some (laughs) thicker years and some thinner years. years. And I just want to make sure that if it's a thicker year that, uh, that everyone's covered on the cake front. People are yet to attend, but <laughs> in the no, future. No, my wife I mean, comes sometimes. The, <laughs> the example, <laughs> my parents do come actually. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Uh, they didn't. They didn't. Th- so this was a this was a leaner year, <laughs> and there was a lot Inter-session. of session. There was a lot of cake left. Okay. Recession. How many <laughs> episodes recession. or movies do you watch? Normally. There's movies. Well, I mean, ep- they episodes movies? are essentially movie length. They're usually about an hour 14 what? to an hour 45. What the hell are you talking about? An hour 45? Just... Yeah, there are some. Yeah. Wow. They're I just know. like made for TV movies, I thought, basically. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. are. They're made for TV I movies. I had no idea. But it wasn't a TV show? 
it was a TV show, but it, but it was a TV show like, it was like the Sunday Night Mystery yeah. on NBC, which is like a two hour block of TV that, or sometimes oh. two and a half or more. I don't know. Wow. But, like Sherlock. So yeah. So it was like a Sunday night movie that they would air on, you know, yeah. on cable <laughs> or on, uh, not on cable, on TV. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Reeves. But uh, how many do you watch? Like two? So normally we watch one episode that is sort of the canon the great episode that's a good uh, representative of, of Columbo. Uh-huh. Yet to find one, but... And then for the people who want to stick around, a lot of people leave after that first one. <laughs> Walk out. For, for the people who want to stick around, I, Keep I've, been showing, watch. I've been showing a second episode that's unconventional or that like puts a twist on the, oh. on the Columbo traditions. Nice. This year, however, because there wasn't a lot of attendance and I was very tired... Uh, we only did the one episode. Oh, but every wow. other year, we've done two. And my homemade Columbo episodes shot, <laughs> <laughs> shot on VHS. Hey, extra life. Oh, Just boy. one more question for you. Yeah. Uh, uh, to answer the question, the, uh, <laughs> the episode was Etude in Black. Oh. oh. Well, Michelle says, for Joe's Columbo game, he showed that he was giving each guest at his Columbo party a carnation and an orchestra conductor's baton. Mm-hmm. And we all know which episode those are from. Am I right, guys? Yeah. yeah. So for my game, I'll name an object or two, and you tell me which game or series they're from. Oh, so yeah. answers could be okay. Braid or Grand Theft Auto, cool. but not one specific GTA game. I'm not that hardcore. Thank you, Michelle. Cool. That's okay. a good game. I like this idea. What? Hang on. Do we have to buzz in? Oh. Um. <sighs> just uh, we'll go around the table. Are Leo, you, do you not want to do this anymore? Well, I'm just reading down a little bit. Okay. From I meant the podcast. <laughs> Your job <laughs> seems like you're not yeah, into it anymore. I don't feel like doing my job. I love my job. Um, oh, yeah, it's funny how that works. Oh. Weird. Yeah. Uh, okay, Leo. What series is this? Are these items from? <laughs> don't shut your brain off. <laughs> <laughs> a mushroom and a flower. Wait, really? <laughs> Mario. Yep. Yep. You got it. Mario. All right, Joe. Uh huh. Cake and a potato. Portal. Two. Right. A cooking right. Mama, actually. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. Reeves? No. A can of fish and a baby's bath toy. Wait. Did you just give me the hard one? Oh, I know. Yeah, this is fine. good. A can oh, of yeah, fish? I know. Is this uh, Wonder Swan or what was that game called? Wonder Swan. <laughs> it's uh, Edith Finch. It is yeah, Edith, Finch. Edith Finch. That's what I was thinking of. What are you doing? You were thinking of what? That studio's other game, which was the Unfinished yeah, Swan. Yeah, that's what I was thinking yeah. of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I mistook for Edith Finch. <laughs> okay, Leo, a uh, sand and a scarf. Mm, journey. Correct. Uh, Joe, a paintbrush and some cherry blossoms. Oh, Okami. Yep. Mm. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, tricky, tricky. Okay, Joe, a beautiful golden bell. Another one. A beautiful golden bell? Come on, buddy. It's your jam. Super Mario Land. What should this be? Why am I blowing this? Is this Animal Crossing? Golden Bell. You can make a lot of noise with it. Oh, Chrono Trigger. Are you serious? There's a big bell in Chrono Trigger. Gun Title Goose Game, you... Uh, What? A big bell? What? They said... Oh, yeah. All right. All right. All right. 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 Was there really only Uh, one item on that one? By the way, and this is just for Joe. Yeah. This is just for Joe. Oh, okay. Man, Goose Game is so good. Oh, tricky. I think these are actual episode. What? What is this game? Why are we doing this? What does it have to do with Columbo? The item thing? So <laughs> what she's saying is that on Twitter, I posted a bunch of pictures of my Columbo's Day party. Yeah. So she looked at those and tried to guess which episode I was showing because the things, the oh, items in the oh, picture, okay. the items in the picture were related to the episode. Okay, so like okay, so the carnation and the conductor's baton. Hanson, you made it so far without having a full breakdown <laughs> on air. <laughs> I don't know why you're blowing it. Okay, uh, Joe, so here's a quiz. I assume these are Columbo episode oh, trivia. Oh man, I'm so bad at these names. Oh, a telephone and some dogs. <sighs> Professor Layton. <laughs> No, this is just Columbo. Oh. Yeah. No, I don't know the name of it. A restaurant condiment chess game and a hearing aid? Nope. 
All right. I'm so bad at these Call names. Call yourself a Columbo fan. All right. Well, he just watches the one episode every year. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I, I really am bad. Eventually at... working my way through the series. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it's kind of good. All right. Well, that's our dedicated 14-minute uh, Columbo segment. <laughs> um, it flies by every time. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Sullivan from, ooh, Mataranka, Australia, uh, saying, hey, Hanson and the handsome Hansa. Thank you. Can you guess the games... This is so good. After, what, four and a half years of people writing in all these amazing things, I'm still amazed by these games. Yeah. They're just incredible. Can you guess the games using only the titles of individual tracks from their soundtracks? Oh, interesting. Oh, no. Okay. They get more obvious as you go from 10 to 1. So the first person to buzz in, right? Okay, okay. City on alert. Shocking turn of events. Negative view. Leo. Leo. Spider-Man. Spider-Man! Mm. Way to go, buddy. Oh, that's good. Um, The Song of the Sword Dancer. Joe. Joe. Octopath Traveler. Incorrect. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> Witch Hunters. Hmm. Back on the Path. <laughs> the I, Octopath. Yeah, I would have guessed the Octopath there, too. So. Conjunction of the Spheres. <laughs> oh... <laughs> Child of the Elder Blood. Ooh. Was that your nickname in kindergarten? <laughs> ben. <laughs> yeah. Bloodborne? No. Dang it. I get used <laughs> okay, to this. Okay, here we go. Oh, yep. The Hunt is Coming. Also a good Bloodborne one. Oh, Leo? Yeah. What's your three? There we go. Well, I thought you wow. guys were going to get it with Witch Hunters. I was like, oh boy, it's right there. All right, great. <laughs> not, it's not Witcher <laughs> it's Hunters. An, it's an anagram of Witcher Hunt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, That's when I figured it out. Smart. <laughs> um, <laughs> Legacy. Holly, Joe. Joe. Destiny. Smart, but no. <laughs> Hollywood. Okay, not Destiny. <laughs> Situation critical. A future worth fighting for. Leo? Leo. Overwatch? Overwatch. Oh, Way wow. to go, buddy. Thank okay. you. Hollywood. All right. Cloud Country. Distant Banjo. <laughs> Winter. First one was Cloud Country? That's right. The Library and Museum. Flower Dance. Dr. Mario Odyssey. That's your name and you're buzzing in? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dr. Mario Odyssey. Patient, <laughs> patient isn't going to make it, Dr. Mario yeah. Odyssey. <laughs> Please bring a little Joy-Con back to the <laughs> What do you want to talk about? <laughs> I didn't go to school for eight years for people not to call me doctor. <laughs> you really didn't go to school for eight years. Yeah, you're just stating a fact. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'd be ridiculous. It's been a long time since I've been in school. Uh, I don't remember anymore. I was trying to guess. Mario Odyssey. Is that the name of the game? Who's Mario? <laughs> oh. How okay. many do we have left of this one? Oh, a this, thousand. This particular item. Uh, last one was flower dance. Oh, uh, that's all of them? No, no, no. Okay. We still have five more. Oh, great, great. Spring. Joe. Joe. Last of Us. Oh, f- no. Oh. No, it's not. Oh, I, I was feeling so confident you were going to get Dang it. Dang it. Hmm. Um, um, grandpa's theme. Oh. <gasps> Shoot. <laughs> Joe. Mean? Nope. No. Oh. Did you get a buzzing again? Wait, did you go? I'm trying. Did you go? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that counted. Dr. Mario on his Don't you remember Dr. Mario? Okay, that counted. Okay. You can get used to this. I can get used to this. Yeah. I can and I will. Please go on. <laughs> oh, okay. Settling in. The Star Drop Saloon. Oh. oh. Pelican Town. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Pelican Town, you said? Yeah. Oh, then I don't know. What Unless it was Stardew Valley? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Okay, I didn't know. Is that called Pelican Town? It's called Pelican Town. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's weird. Oh, dang it. Um, Great soundtrack. Yeah, I thought like the winter thing in the library museum. Like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. No, oh, I, yeah. Sh- I absolutely should have gotten in it. In hindsight, that's, yeah. Great. Okay, this one's tricky. Man. Okay. The Secrets of the Maya. Mm. Oh. The program, I believe. Um, the Spanish Empire. Prizes. Plunder. And adventure. Joe. Joe. Assassin's Creed Black Flag. There we go, oh, baby. Nice. Way to go. What a great game. 
Uh, what do you guys like for email of the week? This one's pretty good. I also liked the puzzle room one. I like the puzzle room yeah. one as well. Yeah. I think that's but a good I yeah. like Red yeah. Dead 2 story. Um, I like the interview questions. I like, I love the luck. That's like, uh, yeah, luck is a good that's gamer-ass gamer, baby. Gamers only. Let's, let's do the luck one. That was a funny discussion, too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, soundtrack game, killer. Yeah. For sure. But congratulations to Adam Sari from Rockville, Maryland. You're the luckiest one of the batch. And that one we solved. You know, we figured out how to make it cool. So. That's right. Yeah, that's right. We That's our first question we've actually <laughs> answered <laughs> yeah. on the GI show, which is great. Uh, hey, uh, on behalf of just me, thanks to everybody that's written in uh, throughout the years. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, seriously, top three highlights of my week, probably top two. Like, I love reading comments once the podcast goes live, but like going through just that sometimes raw and dirty pile of emails. <laughs> like, there's a couple mean ones in there, and then the rest are just like, oh, that's so brilliant. And, like, every every Tuesday evening or Wednesday morning when I'm reading them, like, I will always laugh or go like, huh, in a very obnoxious way. And then Jeff Cork sitting next to me has to be like, what are, you, what are you talking about? And then I'll share it with him, like, check out this insightful idea. So you go, huh, or huh. No, well, that's if I'm laughing versus if I'm intrigued. Right, you know right, how it okay, goes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> New Hampshire? Again? <laughs> oh, it's been fun, community. Uh, but the fun's just getting started. Yeah. In a way. Uh, uh, coming up next, uh, let's take a little stroll down memory lane with some dear friends. And welcome back to the Informer Show. I'm still here. Uh, Leo Vader. Thank you. Ben Reeves. Hello. Jeff Cork. Hi. <laughs> this is a loose segment. This is, hey, I'd like to come on with three of my favorite people in the office. Not that Aww. you're literally my favorites. All of them. <laughs> Near yeah, the, the top of the list. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we'd get yeah. Margaret from production down here uh-huh. if I was being real here. But yeah. you guys will do in a pinch. Fair enough. <laughs> um, very sweet. Hey, Cork, what is Game Informer all about? <laughs> What was what? What's the whole journey been about? What is our mission statement? Yeah. Hmm. Just having fun with your friends. Just having fun with your yeah. friends. And this is the weird thing is like, uh, when I look back at my time at Game Informer, it's uh, podcasting is going to be so high up there. Mm-hmm. And then the, I think the frustrating part, well, there's a lot of frustrating parts, but mm-hmm. just thinking about like, oh, it's literally just making jokes in the bullpen. Yeah, it's that, the best. That sadly the community does not get to see as much yeah. as they should. Yeah. And it's like, how do you fix that problem? Do and you then, live stream the bullpens yeah. 24-7 and say, if you don't like it, pack it up and move to another bullpen? Mm-hmm. How do you fix that problem, Leo? Mm. Of having fun without the community at Game Informer, which feels <laughs> wrong. Everybody wears headsets at all times, and the podcast is eight hours a day. Okay. That's interesting. And oh. then it's just a lot of bad jokes in there, too. Yeah. A lot of boring definitely. stuff. I think you're right, though. There's a certain point late in the afternoon where everybody just starts sitting around <laughs> talking as the day is winding down. Yeah. And it's my favorite part of the day. Yeah. It, Let's it, do that now. Hang on. Let's all sit back and do it right now. Uh, it's kind of like could, the back yeah. half of a day at Game Informer. <laughs> um, yeah, it's weird to think about. I felt like for years... I was a little bit frustrated of just that feeling of like, I feel like we're so close, but we can communicate so much more to the audience and to the community. Like the idea that going back to like Skyrim, which I'm very partial to, because it's like my first ever cover story. And it's like, when we launched that cover story that entire month, we didn't mention it on the podcast. And so like, <laughs> this isn't a critique of like Matt Helgeson. I think it's just like a changing era. It's like, well, that's different. You know, like yeah. we wouldn't talk about that, but it's like, why wouldn't we unpack that trip and talk about what it was like? How Todd Howard struck us? You know, what the team was like? Maybe how did he strike you? Howard <laughs> struck you? Yes. How, a bear how, hard, fist? Yeah. how hard he struck me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Howard Fist? Yeah, it was a hoot. That was a weird trip, man. That was, was like... It? Yeah, because it was it was immediately coming from community TV where it was just a lot of like filming, hey, here's a parade, film what you can. It'd be like asking people if they're up for doing an interview on this sidewalk. And then you say, boy, what do you mm-hmm. like about Roseville, Minnesota? And they say, I like the people here. Plus the challenge of filming a parade, you don't know where it's coming from. Like, where should I set Un- my camera up? Predictable. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it's like herding cats. <laughs> oh, jeez, I just missed it. But Stop then the, filming the sky. But then the shocking part was just like going on that Skyrim cover trip, and that was just like, 
realizing, oh, there's a brick wall of PR mm-hmm. uh, on these oh. cover story trips and just like, oh, this is the puzzle. This is the puzzle for every cover story trip is how to wring the most out of this visit mm-hmm. uh, in the most efficient way possible for the community and kind of get as much as you can through the PR gatekeepers, right? Mm-hmm. And so that was the biggest thing is like, I remember being at the studio and being like, oh my God, you're just surrounded by so many smart people at these studios. So, well, let's just film everybody. Let's get them all on a mic. And then it literally... On that trip is like a PR is like, I'm not going to open this locked door so that you can get another microphone because mm. you're not allowed to interview this person. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, they're a smart developer. Why wouldn't you want them on camera? It's like, there is a format to mm. this. Like, we have certain people. And it's like, what? Like, that was yeah. such a shock. And I felt so naive. Right? Yeah. I feel so naive in retrospect just thinking about like, oh, you just go to a studio. You run around. It's crazy. And like, that's why I, over time, have really fallen in love with like rapid fire, right? Where it's just like finding those formats or those avenues where it's like, oh, some levity and cover story trips, some, yeah. some humanity. Cause that's the mm-hmm. weird thing is like leaving now, you'll look back on everything you created. And it's like, well, what stands out? Where did I waste my time and where was it worthwhile? And I think like rapid fire interviews, having fun with developers, showing the developers as humans, that's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, interview number 48 about the lighting in uh, Battlefield 3. It's like, is that really doing a lot here? Um, What's moving the needle? And then that's why I feel like I love the podcast so much because that's when I felt like, okay, we're almost there. We're almost to a point where I feel like we're firing on all cylinders of just communicating and interacting Mm -hmm. with the community and expressing what I think is special about Game Informer, which is wonderful to work in a place bigger and older than yourself, right? Um, And just trying to boil that down and just having it connect to each listener uh, Mm -hmm. and feeling like you're not wasting this opportunity because it is just uh, you can be overwhelmed if you think about like the opportunities Mm -hmm. I've had and we have here it is yeah, mind numbing. You know, and you get to come up with like cool, fun, creative segments for the podcast. (laughs) Uh huh. That are interesting. Do you have a transition in your mind? Well, we'll get back to your bullshit in a second. <laughs> but, uh, I'm sorry, uh, PR is about to step in. Yeah. <laughs> so remember last year we had a segment called Every Game is Interesting, right? Yes, I, yes, I do. And it was it was about a year ago. And <laughs> what I, is this, Gore? I got ESPN MLS Game Night. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay? Uh-huh. And, and that's when we actually disproved the segment's title. <laughs> I think this one's still wrapped. I don't think you played it. I'm certain it's wrapped. Oh. The, the Evidence is the rapper. <laughs> yeah. uh, mm. I didn't reseal it so that I could make a killing Good on eBay. Trick. Yeah, but I reached out to one of the designers. <coughs> Heard nothing. Back then, yes. Heard nothing. Well, two days ago. No. I got a Facebook message with a whole bunch of stuff, and then it says, "Can I can I read this to you? I hope so because I've gotten all the trouble of bringing out my phone." Um. Yeah, I expected I to bring up a, MLS game <laughs> night on my last This segment. is a tale of redemption. <laughs> Please. The so, perfect moment for this, yes. So, <laughs> producer of the game, David Tyrell, he says... The David Tyrell? The David Tyrell. Of House Tyrell? I love he responds, he goes, <laughs> that's a game I haven't thought about in a long time, but it was a blast to make. Yeah. He said, at the time, the game in Japan had all the international player names, which in America would have gotten us a ton of lawsuits since we had no license deals in place. So I had to rename every player in the game outside of the MLS players. Well, my favorite team to play as was Nigeria. So every team player on that team was a version of my name. Danachi, Tyrelli, stuff like that. <laughs> also, I once took a date to Disneyland, and we went into a future area which had video games, and the game was totally there, so I got to show off for her that my game was at Disneyland. She was impressed, though I blew it with her later. <laughs> and then he says, uh, oh, sh- just noticed this was from a year ago. Sorry, man, <laughs> didn't see this until now. And then he also said... Uh, one of the MLS guys did know all the ratings for me since I didn't know all the players. Naming the international teams was both really fun and really hard to name that many people. Lots of Easter eggs in there from people in my life. So, there you go. <laughs> what the hell, Clark? And I told them to have a great weekend. That's amazing. So, are you retroactively claiming I think because I you blew it with this date? that I he... won. <laughs> Let the world know. Yeah. Jeff Cork won. Mm-hmm. Every game is interesting. Right. Yeah. And now it's officially, as Blank Check would call it, a retired bit. <laughs> Congrats, guys. Yeah. I loved Every Game is Interesting. I felt like that was another one of never quite cracked that, never quite cracked that, uh, th- those ingredients, I think, to make that as interesting of a segment as I had in my mm-hmm. mind. <laughs> yeah. It was almost there, which yeah. is how I feel like a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, the sad thing. Well, there's a lot of sad things. But like when the layoffs happened, somebody emailed in and it's just like that 
time tested lesson uh, that is is wise, even if this person was quoting the American version of The Office, where they just said like, "Hey, you don't know that you're in the good times." Oh, sorry. Like it's like you don't know that you're in the good times till they're over. Yeah. Right. And yeah. It's like oh, that just that email yeah. particularly just crushed me. Uh, yeah. And so it's like oh. Uh, well, let me bring you back down to earth. Please. I remember the first time I met you or actually spent any time with you, we had a like I had a house party because they were retiring. That's right. I brought MLS game night. <laughs> MLS game night. Uh-huh. And I said, don't open that. Whatever you do, <laughs> don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, they were retiring original Formula 4 Loco. So I stockpiled some yeah. and had a bunch of people over. And you yeah. had just started. It was, yeah. I mean, within a week, week and a half, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And we were playing rock band. And yeah. you... Before I realized who you were, you kind of like oh, no. took us aside and you did your little. <laughs> uh, if you're just listening to the audio version, he's, he's doing a very cool, a confident move. Yeah. Yeah. And then he was like, You were like, So what's the gossip around here? What's going on with all the personalities? I got to know everything. And it was just immediately like, I oh, don't know guy. No why thanks. Andy hired this guy, but this was is it just a real like, bad This is rubbing energy. me the right way, or was it genuinely like, this guy sucks? This guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is your opening salvo is like, ooh, dish. I got to hear all the hot beats and cool treats. <laughs> I think Jeff was in love with Annette. What's going on with that? I'm filling in the gaps in really strange ways. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do I cut through this PR BS? But then, so. like, come on. <laughs> and what I love about you is you never change. Yeah, no, exactly. exactly. The shoulders hey. kind of retired that a little bit. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Bob, but you've turned into one of my favorite people. Though, oh, that's very sweet. No Tim Turry, as we all agree. Uh, no, Tim Turry. He's my yeah. absolute favorite. I mean, I said yeah, one you've, expressed that, you've expressed that thoroughly. <laughs> yeah. That's very sweet. Sorry. Yeah, that was that was a fun uh, house party. Yeah. I, I like that a lot. Of... Tim came because he's a hero. He brought <laughs> Bloom and Onions from Outback because he was oh, still working God. there. Oh, that's right. He brought a whole bag right. of stuff. Yeah, Tim was the best. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. You want to think about him for the next hour? Yeah, that'd be nice reflecting on Tim yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I that is it. weird. I always think about that of like... When I think of like Game Informer, like maybe, you know, in retrospect, it'll be different, but definitely while I'm here, it's like, oh, I think of like my Game Informer, which is like when I started, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, it's working with Annette and Tim and Dan and like that crew, but it's like, I worked with Annette for like under a year. Oh, really? Maybe. Wow. Oh, weird. Yeah. It's just absurd to think about that, right? Yeah. It's like, that was a sliver, but it's just like yeah. that time was the most impactful. Like that mm-hmm. Smash documentary era. It's like, oh, that's what I think of as Game Informer. Yeah. And then oh, it's like, yeah. it was hard, yeah. you know, when Dan left, really hard when Tim left. Mm-hmm. And then, and there was a uh, small appetizer compared to <laughs> the last like a couple of <laughs> Yes. <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh, then this is pain. God. Yeah. Okay. How's everything tasting, <laughs> asshole? <laughs> oh, and your parents are divorced now. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Reeves and I were talking. Yeah. Is there a story about you getting punched by someone in PR? Is that true? Did someone in PR punch you? Oh, that's interesting. The story I heard is like one of your first covered story tricks. Well, let's keep it birds. ambiguous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. He said one of. <laughs> yeah, one of. There was something with that. I don't want to point any fingers or anything like that. Uh, but it was something like. What happened? It doesn't. You don't care who did it, but what was going on? You said, "Hey, Skyrim looks really neat." But no, what, no, no, um, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Todd, <laughs> you're not my dad, Todd. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, it was something out at a bar, and it was just like kind of like a bro punch, but it was just one of those like, "What the hell?" Oh, that's a lot less interesting. <laughs> but yeah, I don't at, know. At your nuts? It was at my nuts, uh, I mean, nobody... which was when I launched that Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I heard is that he punched you in the groin. I don't remember. Okay. I genuinely don't remember. I thought you were going another route. Because of... it destroyed your brain? <laughs> well, there's another punch that you, Wait, I, I was to present go. for. But yeah. Wait, I need to go. Yeah, it turns out my Instagram account for was just people <laughs> throwing punches. <laughs> and there was that time you got DDT'd upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I oh still boy. hear that car alarm when yeah. you smashed into the hood. Uh, the real hero here, I think, is is Leo. We all know mm. it. Um, uh, I... I, you are uh, a saint, and the idea of at least until a new hire comes along, you handling all video, including cover story stuff. Um, you are a saint for smiling every day and saying, "You betcha." <laughs> <laughs> every time I hear you nod w- loudly, <laughs> uh, I say, "My God, thank God for Leo." Uh, so thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I consider you very responsible for most of the success I've had oh, in my thank life. You. Wow. If we can tell the full story of you and I. 
Uh oh, easy. Let's it involves do a it. lot there of was, punching. We, I did the internship. Yeah. I met you at Tim Terry's going away party. Oh yeah, Shook that's your right. Hand. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. And it was you were just some quiet guy that you were introduced as like, oh, you know, video. And I was like, okay. And you're also like, I, 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 I know my hands. Wait, <laughs> hold on. This was before you were an intern. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, also, weird. it was weird right because before. yeah, he's like, can we please go to? Club Jaeger, I have a special affinity. Wait, Club how Jaeger, you... I mean, I that they was... just get me. <laughs> In retrospect, that's a weird choice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. Uh, how did you end up at Tim's going away party? Uh, my best friend Joe Buckles was interning oh, at the time. Okay. He invited me out. Sense, and then uh, did that video internship. Felt like I was very nervous throughout that whole thing also. <sighs> well, maybe, but nervous for you is just like, why is Leo so quiet? Because you're so funny. It's like, I don't understand why you aren't talking more. And sure. so that was frustration. It's just like, when is this MF going to come out of his shell? Because it, it's all so good from what we've seen. Yeah. Just rip off that kimono yeah. already, right? Sure. And then we made, yeah, uh, we ranked the Overwatch animations, uh, stuff like that for the internship. You shot the Pokemon mm. Go uh, Man on the Street. That was yeah. another thing. Because I remember enough. talking to you during that. I was like, hey, is this a good joke? Is this? I kept bouncing things off of you. And I feel like you really could have like... Spice that one up if you'd like injected a few jokes like, hey, say this. Hmm. Really yeah, blue, yeah I mean, it's definitely agree. a case of like when I'm nervous, my mind like locks up. It's not like I'm not saying anything Fit by charm choice. Men. It's like... <laughs> what? <laughs> what is that? It's the Hanagram game from a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. You're like, my mind has shut off. Classic. <laughs> yeah, that happens to me a lot. Uh, yeah, but it's frustrating because it's like you're so funny and it, I don't want to you know, go too far behind the scenes here, but with those man on the street things, it's those like are all scripted. Yeah. It's like 80%, I'd say unbearably bad jokes. <laughs> and then we cut it or down to 20%, which is funny. Or just genuine questions about the topic. That's and true. those yeah. never make it into the final cut. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and so that's what's frustrating. It's like, Leah, you're the funniest MF we're here. Help us shape these, yeah. you know, or help us help reshape that Pokemon. And go he on. said, no. Yes, exactly. But you were very kind. You were doing a thing called Minnesota Tonight at the time. Oh, that's right. That was a yeah, Minnesota-based comedy show. Yeah, a local live show with a YouTube presence. <laughs> Did it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, towards the end of the internship, you like offered, hey man, if you want to get involved with that, I'll like let you know if we have an opening or something. Stay oh, in yeah. touch. And that was like, that was a big moment for me. Really? That made me really happy. Oh. Wow. That you wanted to stay in touch. Like you had no obligation to do that. And then you offered and then I joined. And we worked together on that, and I feel like that yeah. was cool for building a friendship with you and, like, mm -hmm. you know, getting our, our banter going. So when you eventually called me out of the blue that there was an opening at Game Informer, yeah, it, was, it felt more natural than it would have otherwise. I That's think. nice. Yeah, and that was very fun. Well, not fun, but uh, Wade was leaving, and it was just before E3? Yeah. Or actually, okay. May 31st. Okay, so it was just before E3 when Wade was leaving, so it was like, oh, F. Yeah. We mm -hmm. are effed. Uh, we need a video person now. So I was like... Hey, Leo, for a video intern, uh, are you interested maybe in a full-time position? Maybe. And it was like, if you would have said no, it's like, oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. Like, you could have asked for $1 million as your salary. Be like, just, okay, just take it, please. That's the quickest turnaround we've ever had in the office because you and Wade were both in the office for a couple yeah, of days. Yeah, I started oh, on a last day. never yeah. happens. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was wild for sure. But yeah, that was, was confusing. the best moment of my life. Because you had, you had quit your job. I put in my two weeks before it was official that I was starting here, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, hey, hey like, <laughs> it's looking good, but slow your roll, buddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was absurd. Yeah. Uh, but yes, you've been a life, lifesaver and all that stuff. Uh, and it's been great working with everybody. Like the, um, especially over the last couple months, like I feel like people have really stepped up um, for like being on the podcast and wanting to keep it rolling, which is really sweet. You know, mm -hmm. like, you know, I think of like Joe in particular, it's like he's busy. Yeah. Probably busier than he's ever been. Um, and it's just that tough thing of like, hey, do you have, Time for emails, and he's always like, "Yep, let's do it." And yeah. It's like, I've not gotten one person being pissy or like, "I don't have time for this." Like, everyone is like, especially in the last couple months, like, "Yeah, we mm -hmm. think the podcast is important. We think talking to the community is important, and yeah. we're 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 all for it." Which That's is awesome. really nice. Lowest level of enthusiasm is if you need me to be on that, I will do but do that for you. That's like the lowest you ever get, <laughs> right? Which is great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, hey, good times. Uh, I remember tweeting at Ben Reeves right when I was hired. And you were like the first person that I reached out to on Twitter. Uh -huh. And I said, hey, Ben, brother, I'm going to be working with you or whatever. Because like, oh, I, I think you were like maybe the first person to like follow me on Twitter or oh, something really? like that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's fun. Oh, that's cool. What did I say? 
You blocked me. <laughs> that sounds right. And then I block punched you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You said, come in here so I can punch you, <laughs> which I thought was interesting. Um, what was your favorite cover story? Mm, great question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, Ground Zeroes oh. yeah. slash Phantom Pain. Because that was the first time going to Japan. Mm -hmm. um, and it was with uh, best buddies Dan and Tim, mm -hmm. like just the three of us. That must have been and we great. Took, and we took like extra days in Japan too. And it was just so much. I think we went to karaoke three times. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. It was, you know, uh, 20 gallons of beer was consumed. It was like a master class probably of seeing someone at the top of their game working so hard and really pitching in and just being like... Yeah, that's what I... I thought I worked hard at Game Informer. And then I saw Dan Reichert on that cover story and yeah. said, this is hustle if I've ever seen it. <laughs> you slow down. You're going to kill yourself, sir. <laughs> You're contributing too much. You're drowning out everyone else. The site is shaking and can't hold all this content. <laughs> It'll fly um, apart. But that was the most fun because it was like, yeah, with, with best buddies and then at the same time meeting Kojima for the first mm -hmm. time uh, combined with like we were the first to play through Ground Zeroes outside of that studio and it was just like when I think back to like, you know, some of peak Game Informer times, it was drinking at a Coco Curry, having wonderful Coco Curry in Tokyo, mm -hmm. unpacking what happened in Ground Zeroes, or even before we went on the trip, or visited the studio, I should say, also just drinking in a cocoa curry, eating delicious cocoa curry, and trying to make sure we were all in agreement on, like, what, here's what we need to ask. Mm -hmm. Let's study the F out of the big boss timeline and make sure we have all the details and know exactly what to ask Kojima. And it was just, like, top of the game, like, understanding lore, and then top of the game trying to unpack, like, Whoa, how is the internet going to react to this Paz <laughs> explosion? And it turns out, like, that scene, it made a bubble. Yeah. But it wasn't as big of an impact as we expected, where it's like, what they imply happened to Paz, and then it's like, okay, yeah. Kojima, uh, uh, brilliant. I remember Dan coming back from that, and that's all he could talk about. <laughs> There's <Yeah>. a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a bomb. <laughs> It's not cool. He was yelling that on the plane. That's why he had trouble coming home. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> you blow. Uh, yeah, but that's probably, that's up there. I mean, like the travel is the crazy part. Like literally, you know, because I had a decent couple of clips to send to Andy and Reiner back in 2010 led to literally getting hey, go around the world and talk to game developers. Like, literally getting mm -hmm. to see the world, talking to people in your favorite yeah. medium, and the part that is just mind-boggling, and I think it's a mistake, it's just, like, zero, <laughs> very little oversight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, Leo, I know you appreciate it, too. When it, I mean, you know, it doesn't come down on you. But, like, just that level of, oh, okay, so I just get to go to talk to one of my favorite developers in the world. No one's going to tell me what to say. No one's going to tell me what to ask. I get to plan out all these video features. It just, if you can get through that system and get it on the internet, no one else even sees this, mm -hmm. goes out on the internet, you know, could get millions of views. And it's like... Aside from PR on their end, you mean? Like on our For end. the system. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not that PR sees the videos. They don't, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the part that just boggles my mind is like a magazine as big as this, numbers wise, but just like the purity of it in so many ways and specifically like cover story trips and just cranking out that content. It's like there's no hoops. There's mm -hmm. no squad of people for approval and it's just like it comes down to like simple things too like it just blows my mind when i look at like gi spies in the magazine those, those pictures and it's like oh this is just a photo from my phone with like the cracked lens where it's like f it throw it in like when yeah. like something so big has so many components that are so raw uh -huh. yeah like that is just like the sweet spot that still will always be magical or like you know it will be in a uh, issue meeting and i'll throw out a suggestion for a top 10 list mm -hmm. and then it's like oh and then a month and a half later, I'm literally just sitting in my living room on a Sunday because I, I don't proof their magazine. Mm -hmm. And so it's the first time I see it is like when it's in my house and open it up and it's like, oh, here's a top 10 list that I just set off the cuff, you know? It's like, hey, it turns out top 10 helicopter boss fights. Hell yeah, man. That was my idea. That's a good yeah. idea. Yeah, it's really solid. Yeah. Uh, you, what was the, like the coolest like behind the scenes moment you had or like to see some insight into the game industry? Like coolest oh, like, oh, I'm interviewing this person and they just told me this thing that nobody knows. Oh, well, maybe this is... I don't know. It's not exactly in my wheelhouse, but I think of, like, you know, going to Capcom for Mega Man 11 that wasn't that long ago, mm -hmm. and then talking to the director, Oda, I think? Mm -hmm. um, and when he just mentioned, like, oh, I was working on Resident Evil when it was a Super Nintendo game. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, Wait, what? Like, just that <laughs> level of just the old school mm -hmm. developers 
that like PR is not going to jump in and say, don't talk about that. Cause like PR is scared of the old developers, especially mm-hmm. Japanese developers where it's like, I don't know, like of an American PR person. I don't know if I can jump in on that. Like yeah. that level of just like, Oh, the internet doesn't know about this. Like what is this now? Um, so that one pops out, but that's, that's too recent. Um, it is always interesting though, when like sometimes PR, PR will be like, uh, don't ask them about old games cause they're not going to want to talk about that. And then, <laughs> You know, you ask them, <laughs> and then that's what they want to talk of about. Of course, so they go off. It's on almost it. like PR yeah. wants them to talk about the yeah. upcoming product, uh, exactly. pre-order now, or whatever. And it's like, no, no, no. This guy wants to talk about his childhood. He wants to talk about <laughs> making games in his early twenties and sleeping under the desk. Good times, you know. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, bro. Never going home. <laughs> that's the sweet spot of game development, from what I understand. Um, so I think of that, or like, you know, just small things. Uh, would make me really emotional. Again, this is pretty recent too, but like having Will Wright on the podcast, somebody that I want to talk to forever and finally mm-hmm. getting to talk to him and him just talking about like his friendship with Miyamoto. That was one of those where I had to go back and look at the video. I'm like, oh, I can't see it in my face. But I remember at the time just being like overwhelmed with like, what the f***? <laughs> like getting to listen to Will Wright talk about his friendship with Miyamoto, like pff, can't get closer to this, you yeah. know? Which and is, that video didn't do that many views, right? No, no one cared. Like that's, that's, that's part of the the yeah. magic of the no oversight thing is that like you weren't didn't have to be driven by pure SEO. It's you could pursue interesting interviews right. and yeah. I got projects. to talk. I, I, sorry to stay on the Maxis front, but got to talk to Ocean Quigley, former Maxis employee, about designing SimCopter for a long time. Like the art direction of SimCopter, which is like, oh, that's exactly <laughs> all I want to talk about. Yeah. Like these very specific things that yeah. mean the world to me. Yeah. Like the protagonist in SimCopter, <laughs> and just like, oh, here's exactly what was happening with that. You know, like that's just beyond heartwarming yeah uh, and like i was it on the pokemon trip on the flight home i made the mistake of watching almost famous mm. again which i feel like if you want to know i think what a lot of journeys in the game industry is like and i'm sure a lot of you know uh what's the enthusiast press communities like it's just that of just that feeling of just like what am i doing here like this is insane like skyrim was a good example of that of like that first trip it's like okay let's film a tour of bethesda and then going around and todd howard's like why are you bringing your tripod and I was like, oh, I kind of want to shoot the tour on a tripod, like, just so it's not just shaky can the entire time. And he's like, I don't think you should do that. And, like, just having that moment in the back of my mind, realizing, like, I'm arguing with Todd Howard about how to shoot <laughs> something. Like, I'm a 22, 23-year-old idiot. Like, I don't know anything, but, yeah. like, no, Mr. Howard, I'm sticking to my guns and sticking to my sticks. Uh, we're we're going to shoot it on a tripod. <laughs> was he right, though? It's You're... a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never bring a tripod. <laughs> that that was, was a lesson. Is there, like, one video feature from early... In your tenure that you wish you could go back and reshoot? Oh, so many. Yeah, those those, those Skyrim videos, uh, yeah. a lot of the interviews, I like... Because at some point, my friend Jesse was like, well, you know, it makes good documentaries. And like, you know, they have the like, close-ups of hands and stuff. I was like, what? Close-up of hands? <laughs> who said this? <laughs> my genius friend Jesse. Oh, the videographer? Uh, who? Uh, and we know him from... You know him as the man who originated the pickup line, are you into word-based board games? Mm. Also the man who... This is the deep cut... For the Game Informer musical, uh, <laughs> uh, the opening segment where we had the parody of um, Everybody Dance Now, that was Jesse and I singing Everybody Game Now. <laughs> so, oh, he's goodness. very well known. Anyways, the point is, for the Skyrim videos then, it was just uh, like cutting for like two seconds to like a close-up of like Todd Howard's hands or like Toes. left eyeball. It is abysmal. <laughs> uh, but then there's even stuff which is really fun, like going back and looking at Smash, the, the Smash Brothers documentary. Mm-hmm. It's like one of my favorite things I've done here. I think it's like that and probably Miyamoto Rapid Fire that I'm like the most proud of. Mm. Um, but with Both Smash... Both things I'm in, by the way, so you're welcome. I'm proud of you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, congrats to Ben, you. brother. Um, and so going back and look at that Smash where it's just like, there's a lot of ugly stuff. Like I was just thinking about recently of like, we had like the confession cam where it's like harsh lighting and they're looking right at the camera. It's like, oh, right by the why bathroom. The, yeah, why the hell was that? Like, <laughs> that's the dumbest thing. Like, just make it look like a nice looking interview. What are you doing? Or like this musical montage is going way too long. Cool it. I know you're excited about using the balloon fight music, but then I look at the YouTube analytics and I see there's like a significant drop off at the exact moment. I think that that's too long. It's mm. like, yeah, turns out the hive mind's always right. I don't know what the hell I was doing. Um, that's so, awesome. Uh, yeah. So in terms of re-editing, yeah, that's big. Um, you know, and you wish you could go back and push certain ideas harder mm-hmm. where it's like, I feel like I was pushing for transparency and, and I'm happy with the amount that we, we got to mm-hmm. overall. But like, I feel like I should have just been on a soapbox more mm-hmm. back in 2010. Oh, we heard you like, loud and clear. <laughs> Trust me, you're, it didn't go unnoticed. Hey, it just said no. What's with Ooh. this lack of transparency on some issues? <laughs> Show me what you got. <laughs> 
Uh, this is maybe <laughs> along the same lines, but just to keep it real negative. Yeah. Do yeah. You, do you have any real regrets? Uh, things you wish you'd gotten to do that you're like, oh man, I, we, mm. we were almost going to do that. I didn't. Cover trips that you didn't get Cover to go on? Cover trips you didn't get to do or. Man. I mean, I would have liked to go film. on Spider-Man, but even that, it's like, that's just an embarrassment of riches that I went on so many of those. I'd already been to Insomniac, you know, so it's like, mm. okay, I passed on that. It would have been cool to mm-hmm. dive in on that, but I'd already been to Insomniac. It's okay. It you was know? boring. <laughs> really? You would have oh, liked it. Spider-Man. Oh, okay. yeah. oh I, yeah, I regret. Um, we did the first Rapid Fire in 2014, mm-hmm. 2013, something like that with uh, Sean Murray and, and Hello Games. Yeah. And I felt like, for years, it was like, we need the perfect situation to make another rapid fire. Mm. We mentioned later for Taken King and stuff, but it's like, we should have pushed that hard. Just immediately like, oh, this format works pretty well. Yeah, but we it turns should... out it's like, oh, it's uncomfortable both to film mm-hmm. and to pitch. And so a lot of times it's like, ah, I don't know if Naughty Dog would have been up for this, but it's like, we should have, I should have really pushed that a lot harder yeah. of like, this is unquestionably great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think it had anything to do with the fallout surrounding No Man's Sky and that particular interview <laughs> being cited so much and things that didn't come true? I don't think so because maybe it was like before it was released you know before uh, that game came out we did plenty so people weren't necessarily fully outraged at No Man's Sky sure. everyone was still kind of in a honeymoon period of, of press for that game at that point and stuff but mm-hmm. I am amazed that when we pitched Rapid Fire you know more people don't shoot it down because they're like wait that video that <laughs> railroaded <laughs> Sean Murray in so many ways it's like, well, yeah. you see well, that in every video about No Man's Sky that interview yeah which is really that nice. weird for you it is and, and that's, the, that's the amazing part too is like you know, I, I get emotional over stu- stupid little things. Like the other day, not the other day, look, it's probably a year ago, <laughs> but um, technically 375 days ago. Um, and other day. I Googled Miyamoto and like, you know, the fifth picture on Google image search was a photo I took of Miyamoto while he was interviewing Tim Turry. And it's like, that's that level of like, oh, that's cool. Wow. I know that's so stupid, but mm-hmm. like, that's the stuff that means the world to me is like somebody as legendary has affected so many people like that, that like I have shed just a mm-hmm. little more insight into that dude. <laughs> Were you logged into your Google account at the time? Because it does keep track of like things that you've looked oh, at that's recently. That's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. I, I do constantly look at that I'm getting picture. a lot of porn ads, too. Were you, just, <laughs> you were just looking at Google Photos? Like your uh-huh. Google Photos account? <laughs> yeah, was that not clear? Um, Most of them were just ones I saved, but that one I took. <laughs> this is amazing. Like, no, just... Uh, even in Google Photos, like they now have a little button where it's like, oh, on this day nine years ago, seven years ago, whatever. And it's like every time I tap on that, it's always like, oh, oh here's wow, like, yeah. yeah, here's this GI spy from the Darksiders 2 cover story trip or something mm-hmm. like that. You know, and it's just like, it's just crazy to have all those photos yeah. of these teams. And, and developers are always yeah. nice. Like that's the rare thing too is like, you think about what's unique about a position like a Game Informer's in and it's just like seeing the breadth of the industry, like going mm-hmm. on 80 cover story trips. Yeah. It's like a very... I, it sounds bombastic maybe, but like very few people I feel like have visited that mm-hmm. many studios and to just try and see like, what are the connecting threads? How are these studios different? Which studios are up their own ass? Which right. are the most humble? Yeah. And by and large, studio and game developers are so much more humble than I'd expect. And mm-hmm. compared to any other medium, I'd imagine, it's just night and day. And it's so refreshing that it's just like, oh, thank God. It's just over lunch, you know, we can talk about our favorite games or, or what games they're playing now. And it's like, that's the sweet spot. It's just so sweet and mm-hmm. sincere. Yeah. And then, you know, Activision adds microtransactions sort of like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's it, layers that it, it delete the purity. It was sometimes hard not to be jealous of you too because yeah. like as writers, like we would go on, I don't know, two or three a year cover trips sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes fewer or less, whatever. But yeah. but you would go on almost all of them. Yeah. And so you're going on like 10 to 12 a year, which mm-hmm. is, cr- so like the amount of studios you got to see is probably more than anybody else in the office. Is that maybe Andy? But I like you've to been to that. a ton. I think it has to be more than Andy, right? Because like, oh yeah, yeah for sure. Because like he during the, the like the modern cover story format where you go out and visit a studio, like I don't know how many he did. I mean, he's been a, to a bunch outside of cover trips. That's is true. all I'm saying. That is true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd be curious. But then you know, I've also visited stuff outside of cover story trips as well. Just quick studio visits. Oh, and okay, quick bragging, dude. <laughs> no, I'm just, I am mm. curious though because it's like, man, that it's it's a very insightful run. And like, yeah, it was tough to be, because uh, you'd be planning for a cover story trip, trying to map out features while going on a cover story mm-hmm. trip, while also editing, from the posting yeah. the other cover story trip. So like keeping those three juggling for so many years, that's the part where it's just like, I'm glad I did it. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm glad that I didn't turn that down. Um, and I'm sorry to Wade if you wanted to go on more. <laughs> but that was the amazing part is like Jason A. Stryker and Wade and, and you, Leo, 
uh, it's been like escalating. But Jason was like, I don't really want to go on curvature trips. He's like, I just want to fuss with tech in the studio. And I'm like, okay, so yeah, I'll just keep traveling the world and talking to game developers. That's <laughs> cool. And then Wade like eventually got to that point where he's more excited and like, obviously going on like Halo Five and stuff like that. It's like, oh, Wade has yeah, to go, you know, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you, it seems like you're opening up to it more. But how do you see it? as a split or the difference between staying in the studio during a month versus visiting a studio? Uh, If I did it every month, I think I would get tired of it. Yeah. Mm. It's a, it's a, it's like exhausting, you know? So going forward, you want Hanson to continue doing that, right? Yeah. If you don't mind, that'd be great. Yeah, no problem. And I, the part that the only part that I'll be happy to be, you know, to have parted with, I think was like just a level of anxiety on those trips. I don't think I gave it, gave my, listened to my own body enough of just, and not even, I don't think it's, social stuff but just like mapping out okay today i'd be really stressed out i'd be like okay today i just have to shoot that one video it's just that one video you can do one mm-hmm. video and then this is the hard part that's that's the hardest video the, the, the rest is easy and then second day okay well this is going to be hard but once you're done with that then the rest <laughs> is going to be easy it's like it was just constantly trying to convince myself not to be nervous yeah. about oh going to the ceo's office and spend 20 minutes setting up a shot and lighting it and go it's like that is so hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's and so stressful. And they want to get back to work because they're busy. Yes, and exactly. And you're setting up a shot to show all the action figures on the desk. Yes. yes. Yeah. At it, the at the end of the trip, the last night before we fly back in the morning or whatever, I pretty much every time feel, why was I so stressed out about this? Yeah. Do you, did you, that happen for you? Um. Yes. Yeah, I think so. But I'm also really sweaty from hauling camera equipment around uh, right. the studios all day and stuff. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, you try and play mind games of, convincing yourself like this isn't so bad this mm-hmm. isn't so nerve-wracking you know you'll be especially you know rapid fire like being on camera um or just having my voice on camera and stuff and just try and remind myself like oh no, this is cool it's no big deal it's just two people in a room because you know you're trying to make them more comfortable but if you said holy christ you know that a million people are going to see this and dissect your every word like we're f***ed we're f***ed it's like, oh, that's what my brain is screaming. But it's like, ah, oh, yeah, this is cool. It's just, just us in a room, man. Yeah. Well, you're speaking of like awkward social situations. We Uh-oh. usually do, uh, and you're the king of that, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we, well, we usually do dinner with people on these cover trips, at sure. least one, where we do dinner with the devs, which is kind of a fun opportunity to get to know these people, but it's also awkward often. But I feel like you were always really good at like, like talking to the people and like getting information that. Um, maybe you normally wouldn't get out of the people. Mm. Like I would sit down and have dinner, and it's like I don't know. I talked to these guys about graphics and lighting for two hours. And kick ball. Tried to. <laughs> yeah, I would kick balls, and you would come away and be like, "This guy used that to work on Blast." That one made the cut. In oh, right, right, right. <laughs> it's like, oh, this guy who's on Tomb Raider used to work for Blast. And he's like, oh, how did you get this interesting info? So I'm going to miss getting all those secondhand oh, that's nice. nuggets of information. Yeah, it turns out uh, I'm still curious about the game industry. Like I really mm-hmm. was worried about like not being into games because I loved gaming podcasts and the game industry so much before I started here. But it's like, oh no, that, that continued. Like I still love asking questions and I'm still really curious about how these things work and mm-hmm. th- th- every developer is smarter than any of us, I'd say. Maybe marketing and production is smarter than some of it. Mm-hmm. So it's just like that opportunity to like never stop asking questions and trying to learn. And that's where it gets amazing then to visit so many different studios and just get to know so many people around the industry and also just like, oh, I feel like I learned some lessons from this person, from this person, from this person yeah. about game development that I won't employ. I'm not going into game development for the record. Uh-huh. Yeah, selfishly, that's like one of the things that has been such a tremendous loss. I know with that last round of layoffs mm-hmm. and then also with you leaving is just you lose like a huge chunk of institutional knowledge. Oh, there's sure. like somebody that you could talk to about like, hey, did this person used to work here? I mean, it, and it's more reliable if you're like, yeah, I sat at his desk and talked to him versus just going to like Moby Games or whatever. Exactly. You know? So I, I I think that, you know, that's going to be really hard to recover from. Because like whoever replaces you will certainly, I'm sure, be like capable and everything, but they won't come with that knowledge. And right. we all kind of joined the staff at varying degrees of experience. Mm-hmm. But I don't think any of us came here like completely formed to where we are now because that would be insane. So right. and that, it'll be a new person that we can kind of mold and they'll learn things along the way and they'll be the old timer someday. Yeah, but, and they can wear my clothes. They can wear your clothes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that is, yeah, just talking about that knowledge or just familiarity with the game industry. That was the biggest, strangest thing about like those early meetings at Game Informer. We'd have an issue meeting mm-hmm. and Andrew would be like, we're talking about a feature and then you'd be like, yeah, maybe we could get Randy to comment on that. No big deal. Or we'll see, we'll, we'll see what Tim's doing. And mm-hmm. it's like, wait, Tim Sweeney, Randy, Pitcher. like trying to figure out like, yeah. oh, first name basis with these people. Like, good <laughs> Christ. I'll All just right. email them. Yeah. 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 I guess so. That was just shocking. <clears throat> um, I'm sad you and I never got to go on a trip together. That's right. 
we were talking about it because we were maybe going to visit this is a while ago the PUBG studio in Madison. Right. And that was one where I'm like, oh. just be you and I load up in a car and go. That would be so fun. That would have been great. Right yeah. off a cliff. And that's it, it's it's weird too to think about like yeah those ships that passed in the night. You know, I think of like I was on mic with Dan Riker, like one of my best friends, very little. Like, oh, really? mm. he left around the same era, I think, where, like, he started hosting the podcast and doing more video stuff and being a mic in general. And so it's just yeah. crazy that it's like, well, of course, Dan and I together, but it's like, it's not that much content where it's mm-hmm. two of us on mic together. You guys you weren't know? on replay that often? Maybe every once in a while, it'd just be me laughing in the background because it's like, oh, I just like producing it. Ah! Ah! <laughs> 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 it's always charming people say they like that. Even, like, it's nice that it carries forward to you, too, Leo. Like, when they hear you laugh in the booth, it's like, oh, that's nice. Yeah, we love to laugh. We love to laugh. I could not imagine a job where I laughed harder. Seriously. It's, it's yeah. absurd. Yeah. Uh, like, I go back. If you want some good old school Game Informer, there used to be this feature called Game Informer Overheard, mm. where just, we just write down things in the office. And I maybe posted like three or four. Uh-huh. I kind of inherited it from Annette, I think. And like going back, it was just like a sliver of time. But going back and reading those like that stuff makes me so happy too, because mm-hmm. it's just like a stupid joke in the office. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I just say. You made a perfect joke. Take, please, please. So there was a, apparently a wasp at Hanson's desk the other day. Recently. Recently. And Hanson has like an ocarina yeah. from, that's like Zelda branded, go figure. Mm-hmm. And he used that to squash the wasp. Okay. And then, uh, this is such an amazing story that uh, Brian Shea had to come over and investigate mm-hmm. and find out what was going on. Mm-hmm. And Hanson said, I guess I played that B flat. Mm. Are you kidding me? No, I don't know. Yeah. It might be the perfect trip. Thank you. Yes. Take a bow, sir. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, wait. The perfect joke. Yeah. It was the perfect joke. Although. That's incredible. I don't know, man, because a while ago we were talking about genres and what genre. Uh, let's see. Oh, we're talking about uh, Loco Cycle is or mm. uh, Road Rash. And I think you said it was a road like. I don't remember that. Oh, that's pretty mm. good. It's so, mar- marginal. It's no B flat. <laughs> Honorable mention. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Did not qualify. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I'm trying to remember. There's some I'm trying to think of like the best Jeff Cork joke. Uh we're blessed I, with a lot of them. That's true. I am happy when I finally cracked the card and realized the thing that you like and will always make you laugh is when you say little. Uh like I could say like um I could say like, "Oh, check out my little booty butt," <laughs> yeah. and like, yeah. for there some reason, yeah. Yeah. that's so much funnier to you than just saying "check out my butt," which is a yeah. very frequent phrase. Right. Uh, yeah, all you time. had to workshop that a yeah. lot to get to, to little booty butt. You were like heavily requested to leave <laughs> <laughs> by HR. <laughs> they said, "All right, enough of the little booty butt talk. We've heard a little Getting too much." Intercom. <laughs> but even there, your use of heavily requested. <laughs> Yes. Adds to it um, rather than you just have a requested. real mastery of language. Sir. True, man. Uh, I remember, and this is Cork and Hanson. Like Cork described Hanson as an animated scarecrow, which I just thought was funny. <laughs> oh, he's, oh, he said freshly animated, freshly animated scarecrow. That's good. Yeah. He also one time <laughs> called me a Muppet made flesh. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. It's like who can? Are you some sort of writer or something? That's insane. I save it all for talking about you. Quick, I, do, I don't put do any Leo. of that in cover stories. Don't worry. You're not missing anything if you don't subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah, it's it's the silly jokes and stuff that will be uh, sad to leave behind. But at the same time, it's like, oh, I feel like it should be a full history lesson or I should have more to share. But it doesn't feel final. No. I mean, me, you're just any, down any, the street and I'm I sure I'll be working with you. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I literally live down the street. I'm coming back for Extra Life on November 2nd. That's going to be so much fun to auction off all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I expect it to be just a little emotional. Mm-hmm. Um, but that'll be a good time. Um, and so it's like, I st- I'm Leo, I would not leave you hanging to, to plan Extra Life. As I've started to really shift into third gear on that, it's like, as I'm leaving... I remember, oh, God, this thing's a nightmare to plan. That's right. <laughs> and so I, we're probably going to be working together every day, you know, uh, over Slack or whatever the hell, just to try and figure out how this thing's coming together. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and and for the community, I understand, again, that it's abrupt and weird and confusing, but, like, Game Informer lives on. The mm-hmm. podcast will live on. There's still so much talent. There's still so many good folks here. Um, I don't want to take anything away from that. You'll live on. I'll... 
for now. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So plug uh, your stuff. Where are you going? Did you already share that stuff? It's a weird thing. Uh, you can follow me at Yosetti on plug Twitter uh, to talk all about it. Plug it. But again, mm-hmm. what I like doing is podcasting mm-hmm. with my friends. Shooting Game club like videos. <laughs> <laughs> and interacting Bar with the community mitzvahs. and getting closer with the community and uh, community meetups I love around the Minneapolis area. I'm not mm. moving. Um, I like building studios. <laughs> I like a lot of things. <laughs> Waiting one day before big information drops. Uh, or zero days. <laughs> um, so please, uh, yeah, I, I'd love uh, to stay in touch with everybody who's enjoyed this podcast over the years because it's been, it has been, you know, the number one thing. Mm-hmm. Like it's been so much fun. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't want this segment to end. Yeah, uh, we got, hey man, you got next week's podcast to start recording. You got to whip Andy into shape, man. Yeah. Hey, what am, what do I do about that? <laughs> tell, just tell him not to uh, treat the podcast as dumb. That's all I care about. Mm. You know, as long as he can elevate his self-esteem to admit that it's worth listening to. I just don't want him to be like, uh, I don't know what I'm doing here every week. <laughs> it has to fade with time, right? It has to, right? Yeah, I honestly, I, I am so excited. I, I I hope it's exciting for the community too. Like I think it's really cool to have King Old Timer uh, host this podcast. He's Cork. Yes. Andy mm-hmm. is a real personality, and I yep. I'm happy to get it out there more with the future of the Game yeah. show. And I'm sure he'll be just as judicious about marking down his swears on a piece of paper. <laughs> well, I guess that's on you, Leah. Yeah. yeah. Have fun editing. Oh yeah. boy. Have fun staying late every Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, that's it for me on the Game Informer show. But again, I hope people don't feel too robbed. We We're losing you. something. It's the end of an era, but I think the beginning of beginning of something new. Several new ones. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, all right. Without further ado, you clap yourself the f- out of here. All right, bye. Oh, he's gone. Oh, sh- I guess we gotta close it out. So, what does he always say? Cork, take it away. Uh, whatever makes the show better, <laughs> I think is his classic line. I don't know. Thanks everyone. Yeah, thank for you watching all for watching, or watching. listening, or yeah, listening, and listening to a, to a new episode of the Game Informer Show. We'll be back again next Thursday. We'll have a new episode waiting for you. I think he nailed it. Bye, everybody. Bye.